Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of May 16th, 2013. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight. I'm presiding. Uh, before we convene, we will start with comments from the public. And you're invited to come up and uh, address the council on any topic, whether it's business we're addressing tonight or not. Uh, please keep your comments to three minutes or less. There's a timer right there. Uh, it shows you the time remaining. And after three minutes have lapsed, please close your remarks. And if you insist on exceeding the time and do not abide by a request from the chair to stop, I will call a recess. Uh, the cameras will be shut off and will not proceed until you quit the chambers and you will also forfeit the privilege of participating in public comment uh, in the future. Uh, the council fair. rules of decorum also require the council to listen attentively and not participate in the exchange with the speaker. So if you're speaking, your questions will be merely rhetorical because we're not allowed to answer. Uh, and at the risk of saying the obvious, this meeting is being recorded by Northampton Community Television and the recording is a public record available for anyone from NCTV. And when I call your name, please introduce yourself and state your address for the record. Uh, first up is John Cotton. Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is John Cotton. I live at 24 Turkey Hill in Florence, Mass. I am also the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Smith Vocational School. Uh, on April 3rd, 2013, the mayor stated that he intended to seek city council authorization to petition the state legislature for special legislation re reconstructing Northampton's two local systems into one unified K-12 district that can provide a high quality education for both general and vocational and agricultural students in a more efficient and phys physically sustainable manner. That's a quote. The mayor cannot seek city council authorization and a special act to unify the two systems into one. Under the terms of the will, the board has care and management of Smith and the income it annually receives. The only method that the mayor can utilize to unify the school is a petition in probate court to change the terms of the will. In 1926, the attorney general, then when discussing Smith in particular, concluded the statutes purporting to vary the substance or express administrative provisions of a charitable trust are ordinarily unconstitutional. The Attorney General found it unconstitutional for the legislature to pass a bill to change the name of the school in the will, a measure which undertakes to vary the substance of, a, of the trust or even an administrative provision which is expressed or unequivocal, unequivocal will ordinarily pass the bounds of this powder, uh, power. The Attorney General alluded that the only way to alter the provisions of the will is to seek a petition in the Court of Equity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Camilla Carpio. Uh, please, yeah, you want to present the... Um, my name is Camila Carpio. I'm a junior at uh, Amherst Regional High School. I am here today as a member of the Justice for Jonas group to speak out on behalf of Jonas Correa, his innocence, and his rights, which I believe were violated by the Northampton Police Department. On March 1st, an 31st, an alleged lawyer witnessed and videotaped Jonas Correa's arrest. The video, which displayed police officers macing, tackling, and hitting Jonas while they handcuffed him, went viral off in, in YouTube, gaining over 75,000 views. Um, as a result, several citizens, both locally and national, became extremely concerned and began to question the ethics of the police department, as we all should. I'd like to begin by addressing the Nor Northampton Police Department, of whom I have lost all respect for. Regardless of what you claim in order to save your undeserved reputation, it is evident that the force used upon Jonas Correa was unethical, harmful, but above all, extremely unnecessary. You are employed to protect, maintain, and recuperate the equality um, and, and safety of all citizens. The people of Northampton do not pay taxes so that the town can hire malicious police officers who assault innocent people and then try to cover up their own brutality by imposing irrelevant charges, like the false accusations of misconduct and resisting arrest you charged Jonas Correa with. 
You have ruined the re honorable reputation Northampton has gained by hosting its, um, pri its, its uh, LGBTQ pride parade. Um, however, inequality should not just show, annually show up one morning, one Saturday each year, and then leave the following Sunday. Each member of the community must strive to ensure that, the, er, that everybody is treated fairly. However, the common citizen, unlike you, is not paid to ensure human rights, and that's why it concerns me when people like you who fail to execute their responsibilities as a police officer remain in control. Authority is a responsibility, not a privilege, handed out simply to be abused because certain officers are immature, imprudent, and ignorant. This isn't some r radical anti-racist com campaign, although the African-American males making up 40% of prisons and overall more African-Americans incarcerated than there were slaves in 1850, I think we should definitely have one. But this incident is not exclusively about his race. Fortunately, there were no racial slurs performed against him. However, when 97% of the victims of, per of police brutality are African-American and Latino, it is only natural that this issue be considered when an innocent Cape Verdean man who demonstrated none of the misconducts of which you accused him of is arrested. To, to the DA, David Sullivan, um, correlating to race, I would just like uh, to ask you um, why, if there was no misconduct um, shown in the video, however, it was shown pre that you guys claimed that it was shown previous to the video, uh, why the police brutality was not immediate as a response to the misconduct. Um, therefore, if it is not you know, a response that is, that is as uh, expected of police as no police conduct. It was in simply a premeditated and deliberate malicious act. Um, thank you for dropping the criminal charges, but you should also drop the uh, civil charges um, and also review uh, the responsibilities that the police have and how their ability to perform that. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. Wow. Mm. Uh, Vera Gage, Cage, please. I want to thank my sister, Camila, high school student from Amherst. Jonas is my neighbor. At first, we didn't know who he was. He was anonymous, had no name. But he has a name and he has a family that we quickly learned. And we learned his address. And we learned that he was our neighbor. He has a family. He has two children, two little girls. My son came home as I was trying to search who this person was so I can direct him to folks that could help him. My son is seven years old. He sits with us today in the back. And I wrestled with the thought of having him view this video that he saw me view over and over again. I allowed him to see it because I don't want to hide from him what is obvious in this world. And as a young person of color, he needs to know and understand the world that he exists and lives in. Jonas was enjoying a night out in town. He's a resident of Amherst. Northampton is less than a 15 minute drive. Who would have thought he would have been maced trying to enjoy a night out in town? After viewing the clip, the YouTube clip, my son said, I hate white people. How could one video clip conjure that sentiment from a young seven-year-old first grader whose teachers are white? And I was happy, I was glad, I was thankful that I could immediately respond to him and say, what about so-and-so? What about so-and-so who's white and who's helped, who's helped done anti-racism work? So I call upon you today as governing bodies of Northampton to figure out what the lessons are in the story that I just told about my seven-year-old son and his comment. Children aren't clouded and, and, and informed and, and, and educated and um, they don't read, you know, what a lot of the politics and, and you know, we, we, we pick our sides and we choose our battles. But I ask each and every one of you, whose side are you on? Are you on Jonas's side or are you on the side of, of excessive force, on the side of police brutality, on the side of 
handing down criminal charges that could have forced a, a young a father, a young father, to two and a half years sentence in jail in prison. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Joe Tarantino, please. How are you? Um, my concern is on a different topic tonight. Joe, can I can I ask you to just state your address, please? Uh, it's 110 North Elm Street. Thank you. I wanted to talk about the uh, pending Proposition 2.5 override. In 2004, when we went through this exercise, there was a bitter campaign that uh, was decided by eight votes to, against the override. And I remember that campaign pretty clearly because there were actual yard signs as if there were uh, actual uh, candidates. There were union-made signs that somebody had paid for to say yes to the override. So there was this concerted effort, and there was even people who donated money to this organization to ram through this override. And they lost. And I wrote a letter to the Daily Hampshire Gazette that got published that uh, said, well, you know, I'm sorry for those people who wanted to raise their own taxes. Why don't you use this opportunity to declare victory, figure out how much you wanted to pay, and pay it. So I see that the estimate is that it's about $235 for the average property owner for the current override. So, you know, I'm thinking, I know this guy who had a, had a uh, sign on his lawn, and I went and I asked him, and I said, did you do that? Did you go ahead and figure out how much extra you were eager to pay and pay it? And he said, no, he didn't do that. And I said, why? And his response was, it wouldn't be fair. So what I was left with from that exchange was that this person thought it was the right thing to do to raise everybody's taxes, including his own. But he wasn't going to do what he said and advocated the right thing to do. He wasn't going to, he wasn't going to do that himself because people who disagreed with him weren't forced to also do it. So it wasn't that the decision to not pay the money he wanted to pay was, had anything to do with whether it was the right thing to do or not. It had to do with whether compulsion was going to be put on other people who disagreed with him. And I never understood that. So I recently gave my 42nd pint of blood to the Red Cross. From, since 1994, I've given a little bit more than five gallons of blood. And that, that, of course, that's all voluntary. Now, few things, few resources are more precious than human blood to be reallocated. And even though I've already given more blood than most people, I intend to give more. One of the reasons is because the IRS and I, we kind of, the, uh, the Red Cross and I, we kind of see things that they're not going to take all that blood at once. They're going to take a pint at a time. Regardless of how much they need, it's what's safe for me. So I've been in situations where there's a blood drive, but I'm not eligible to give because I've given within 56 days. And I thought that that was kind of a refreshing example, that they'll take what the person can donate rather than a need-based thing. Well, how much do we need? Let's see how much more we can get out of this person. So I had another point to make, but I see that my time is up. I appreciate the opportunity to kind of express this view, and I hope that I have an opportunity to kind of revisit this later. Thank you. you, will, you will, it will always be available to you here at the podium of uh, the council meeting. So. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Your, um, Stephen Callahan, please. Hi, my name is Steve Callahan. I live at 824 Burt's Pit Road in Northampton. I've been a city resident for 40 years, and I worked in the city schools for 30 years, 15 at Smith and 15, including five years in the central office here. And uh, I just want to say that I've been sort of upset about the whole way this thing has been handled in terms of the Smith vocational change. I mean, for years, I would take friends around the city and say, this is the first city that thought women could learn. It was the first city that thought deaf kids could learn, and they even thought farmers and mechanics could learn. And that these were institutions, and they said something about the city. They said something about the city when we were the only city that voted against Proposition 2 and a half. But when I see talking about reorganizing the school in the midst of a budget fight, it really just upsets me. Uh, if you're talking about planning and making a change, it might be helpful to have a superintendent at Smith School who completed one year you know, to get one year on his belt. It would be helpful to have a superintendent in the city schools that was hired, that you had one, and who was going to plan and implement this change. Whether you can jam it through the legislature or change the will, I don't know, but it's no way to sort of organize education within the city. 
couple of other things I'm concerned about is I vote for the overrides. So I mean, I have. But I get upset when somebody says, come on, let's donate a little more money for education in town. And I've always been willing to do that. But then the mayor suggests, well, we can achieve savings and efficiencies through this reorganization. Why would I vote for any more money for education if the mayor thinks there's money being wasted right now? And I think it's a terrible time for this to come out, you know, just before the election. Finally, just practical things, because I don't think anybody has been planning or thinking. If you make it one school system, any kid can come into JFK or at the elementary school as schools of choice. And once they go to Smith Vocational School, instead of getting $15,000 or $19,000 a year tuition, you'll get whatever the state is passing out that year for school of choice reimbursement. Okay? There's been letters to the editors saying that, you know, the city has 25% of the students and 75% of the cost. I mean, that's not correct. Last year, I think it was 86% of the city appropriation was remitted by, a, you know, tuition. And every year that tuition is adjusted so that the Northampton, citizens of Northampton get a fair or slightly better than fair shake in what's going on. Okay? But thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Greg Jones, please. Good evening. Uh, Greg Jones, 42 Graves Avenue. Um, coming this evening, uh, I received a phone call today um, about the uh, DPW vote on the easement for the end of Graves Avenue which was scheduled, at least it was announced in the Gazette today. So none of the residents on Graves Avenue were aware of this until it was brought to my attention by a non-Graves Avenue resident um, who remembered our issues with the planning board and the uh, attempt for an acquisition of a strip of land <coughs> from historic Northampton. Um, and so we're kind of faced with the same situation that we were faced with before in that we were not really given due notice about this vote. Um, I did take some time out and I went to the DPW late this afternoon and I was able to get uh, three pieces of the uh, plan and the, uh, uh, the easement uh, guarantee or order from historic Northampton and, um, but I was not able to get the actual uh, form that you will be using today to vote on. Um, but I was able to read it and to look it over. Um, and the issues that are on that, uh, that order are the same issues that we had with the land purchase. Um, it's completely open-ended. It doesn't put any restraints on the easement at all, and it doesn't uh, prohibit uh, any development um, from uh, either Butterside or historic Northampton side. So uh, we're in a difficult position. Um, I'm here as an individual. I'm not here speaking for anyone other than myself. But I do know that this is, as you remember, a very passionate issue with the residents of our little dead end street. And it seemed the timing of this or the lack of uh, due notice um, was a problem. Um, one of the abutters is in Guatemala. He sent me an email today. I sent an email out at 4.45 today. Um, I was able to speak to two city councilors really quickly. Um, uh, and I've gotten a slew of other emails from folks. Um, uh, Holly uh, um, Mott is in California. Her husband's father passed away. She was one of our key people here. So we've got folks that really, really have something to say about how the city engages our street, one, Two, whether we can just be given some type of a notice and a meeting. Um, we don't even know if we're a complete street. We haven't been told whether our street is uh, a, a fully legitimate street. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically here to ask you to table the vote and to allow us to schedule a meeting with DPW, to allay our fears, and for us to address in some concrete way some verbiage uh, with respect to this vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. This is, this uh, Garrett Shank. Hi. 
Uh, my name is Garrett Skank. I live at 392 Montague Road in uh, Sunderland, Massachusetts. I'm a frequent visitor in Northampton. Um, I'm here with the Justice for Jonas Coalition. Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen the video. I mean, if you haven't, you probably should go and take a look at it. Um, I find it pretty shocking. I assume all of you who have viewed it have some concerns about what your police are doing. And I don't really understand how Northampton city government works, what role you guys have in policing the police. But I think it's something that you need to, uh, you need to take up, either talk to somebody, get on the phone to the police chief, because it, it doesn't do the reputation of this town any good to see that video. And the fact that it was on video is something that is um, sort of fortuitous. It was a, a chance event. Somebody happened to be there with a camera. But what other incidents have taken place over the years with Northampton police that weren't on video and have just somebody had to plead out because the, the, when the police make a statement, it's generally accepted by the media, by the juries, by the judges. But the fact that there hasn't been media or, or, or videos on prior incidences doesn't mean that they haven't happened. So I want you people to think about what role city council can have in this going forward. Um, because you don't want Northampton to have another incident like this. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt the reputation of this town. That's all. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Uh, Jean LaFrance, please. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jean LaFrance. I live out on 310 Cold Meadow Road. And several months ago, this city's government announced a budget shortfall of $1.4 million. The city proposed a Proposition 2.5 tax override to overcome this projected operating budget shortfall threatening to lay off approximately 30 teachers and police officers if the override did not pass. Now the city is saying that only 15 teachers or police officers will be laid off if the override does not pass. But the city now wants a, a Proposition 2.5 tax override for $2.5 million. This proposed override will not be for one year, but forever. The city's rhyme, reason, and business operating common sense and logic escapes me. The city is facing an alleged budget shortfall of $1.4 million, yet it has just agreed to fund $250,000 to complete a bike path leading from Leeds to Williamsburg. At this point in time, wouldn't that $250,000 be better applied to the city's budget shortfall? The $250,000 represents five teacher or police officer positions. Where's the city's concerns and priorities really lie? The city is proposing a $2.5 million proposition tax override in the face of the fact this city's economic tax base and loss of jobs is falling faster than General Custer's troops at the Battle of Little Bighorn. The city is touting a proposition 2 and a half override in the face of businesses closing on Main Street and elsewhere throughout the city. It makes no good business sense that in a time period when a city's property tax income base is rapidly shrinking, the city is hell-bent on taking a position totally ob oblivious to the reality of the times and is demanding already overburdened taxpayers should shoulder even greater property tax burdens. The Proposition 2 and a half tax override is a classic example of taxation without representation. If I recall correctly, over 200 years ago, the people of this country fought a revolution with England over just such a principle. There are 19,933 registered voters in the city and only 10,682 listed property taxpayers. Do the math. The registered voters outnumber the property tax owners by nearly two to one. I challenge anyone in this room, or in the city for that matter, to convince me why a person who doesn't own a dollar's worth of property in this city and who doesn't pay one red cent in taxes has the privilege of dictating to me or any other property owner in the city 
what our tax burden should be. This city's government insists on administrating its property tax income like a junk, drunk on a spending spree with somebody else's credit card. Only in this case, the city government's credit card they are using belongs to the already tax overburdened property owners. Captain, Captain, I'm sorry, your time has expired and lapsed uh, some time ago. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. You're more than welcome. Uh, Jordana Rosenberg, please. Jordana Rosenberg, 251 Ridge Road in Lawrence. I'm also an associate professor at UMass Amherst and a member of the Justice for Jonas Coalition. I'm just up here to quickly uh, lend my voice to what's already been said about this case. Uh, and I just want to say, I guess, um, I agree with Garrett that there are very likely many cases that we don't know about. There also are similar cases that we do know about, and this case is a chilling repetition of events that here we are again defending a man of color against unjust charges in this area. Uh, it's very clear, I think, what we need to do and what we're asking the council to do is to uh, support our actions. Um, we're asking for an independent review of the police around their execution of unjust force. Um, and we're asking the city council in any way that they can to pressure the police to drop the civil charges against Jonas Correa. Um, the DA already made a determination to drop the criminal charges. So why they've been converted into civil charges, I think um, there are a number of things to say about that. It's pretty clear that one thing that it does is shield the police a priorly against judgment against them. And that's something that we, and specifically Jonas Correa, didn't have the ability to be a priorly shielded against judgment. He had to argue his case, and he won. And now it's been converted into a civil charge, and that just isn't right. Uh, and the city council should exercise whatever power they have to exonerate Jonas fully. Um, to follow up on what the DA started. He's been exonerated of criminal charges. He needs to be exonerated of everything, and the police need to be held accountable for uh, attacking people in the street like this. So um, we have some flyers and fact sheets that we made up uh, in conjunction with the ACLU um, documentation of this case. I'm wondering if I can pass it out to the sure, council members. Sure, that's fine. Yep. Okay, thank you. And that's all. Thank you. Um, that's all we have signed up for. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak during public comment? Jeff? Uh, state your name and address. Just, make a, just a really quick statement. Jeff Massimino, 3440 Hill Terrace. I just wanted to talk really quick about the override. Um, most of you guys sitting up there, I know you guys. I love you. But one thing I think is that a lot of you don't realize what it's like to be poor. And there's a lot of people out there like me that are just barely getting by. <clears throat> And now this override, in my case, it's probably going to raise my, my rent. And it's more money that I don't have to pay. You know, in the last five years, I've lost a lot of income. A lot of us have. And um, I just really quickly want to say that there's tough choices that are going to have to be made. There's probably some cuts you're going to have to do rather than asking for money every two years. And I don't know what those choices are going to be, but I don't know. Just wanted to say that. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Anyone else interested in speaking for the council? Yes, Mike. And, and Michael, I, I feel compelled to remind you that uh, three minutes is what we've got for you. Yes. In fact, that's what I'm here for, actually, to apologize for, for the last time I was here on the public comment. You know, <clears throat> I was kind of in a bad mood for a variety of reasons, and I wish to apologize to the council for, you know, for being somewhat in a bad mood. Maybe it was seasonal affective disorder. <laughs> I don't know. Um, in any fact, I just wanted to t take the time to uh, mark the passing of the uh, Green Street Cafe, which I guess Smith is knocking down, as another... May 28th. What time? May 28th. May 28th. 
that that the, we've seen over the years a smooth, inexorable gobbling up of a neighborhood, and we will continue to see it, including gobbling up of our of our vanishing tax base. Um, I just wish to note that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Anyone else? Going once. Going twice. I'm going to ask the clerk to call a roll to determine a quorum. Mr. Adams? Here. Mr. Carney? Here. Present. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. Present. Here. 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 We do have a quorum. So we are convened. Um, <coughs> given the circumstances, we have um, a number of people. We have a couple of special prop, uh, presentations, and the mayor's going to be making some proclamations as well. Um, but I would like to beg the council's indulgence to consider before the mayor makes a budget presentation that we, uh, we have a late file uh, presentation from the Youth Commission. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mayor does have some proclamations he needs to make as well, so that we can, so people don't have to sit in the chairs. It's for fine, certainly. Time. Is everyone okay yeah. with that? Yeah. Um, Your Honor, you're, this is your time anyway. So, uh, if if you could break up your presentation and just uh, parse out the budget part, and then we'll we'll proceed. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, honorable members of the city council. Um, I have two proclamations that uh, I'd like to deliver this evening, and I believe we have folks here to receive each one of them. Uh, the first one is entitled Safe Prom and Graduation Season, uh, May, June, uh, May through June 2013. Whereas prom and graduation season mark an exciting and memorable time for Northampton students and families, and whereas these events are a time of great anticipation that should be enjoyed as safely and responsibly as possible without the use of alcohol or other drugs, and whereas heavy drinking is especially dangerous for teenagers whose brains are still developing and alcohol-related damage incurred at a young age can have long-term effects, and whereas a recent survey found that 86% of Northampton parents discuss family rules about alcohol and drugs with their teenagers. 96% do not allow underage drinking in their home, and 94% of parents do not allow their teens to attend unsupervised parties. And whereas it is illegal for a person 21 or older to, uh, to purchase or provide alcohol to a person under 21, and a criminal violation for the host of a party to allow a person under 21 to possess alcohol on their premises, and whereas city government encourages everyone to act responsibly for the health and safety of our whole community as we celebrate the milestone achievements of our young adults. Now, therefore, I, Mayor David Jane Arkowitz, do hereby proclaim this to be a safe prom and graduation season in the city of Northampton. I encourage all community members to support parents and guardians in their ongoing commitment to keep their teenagers safe and healthy by setting clear rules and expectations about underage drinking and other drug use and to not uh, and to not purchase or provide alcohol for anyone under the age of 21 in witness whereof i have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the city of northampton this 16th day of may in the year 2013 david j narkowitz mayor and I believe Marissa Hebel from the Prevention Council is right behind here to receive it. Right behind. There you are. You are Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all your work. Um, I was going to make a statement, but this is a really good proclamation, so I think he really is did, well said. Do you want to make of... the statement without the whereas and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I think I can do as good, as good a job. To a human language? Thank you. Okay. We'll, Thank you. Wa we'll waive your reading. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. Uh, your Honor, you have another proclamation. Okay. Um, the second proclamation that I wish to issue tonight is entitled National Public Works Week. Uh, May 19th through the 25th, 2013. Whereas public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs such as water, sewer, streets, stormwater, parks, and solid waste, 
And whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction, is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public's, public works officials, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now, therefore, I, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, do hereby proclaim the week of May 19th through the 25th to be National Public Works Week in the City of Northampton. I call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the City of Northampton this 16th day in May 2013, David J. Arquitz, Mayor, and I believe the deep W. Mr. Huntley is here to receive this. Thank you, Your Honor. I can take a few minutes and say a few words about it. This is the 53rd celebration of National Public Works Week. This week is a celebration of the tens of thousands of men and women in North America who provide and maintain the infrastructure and services collectively known as public works. Instituted as a public education campaign by the American Public Works Association in 1960, National Public Works Week calls attention to the importance of public works in community life. This week serves to enhance the prestige of public works and the professionals who serve the public good every day with quiet dedication. Reflecting on what public works daily provides its citizens and businesses are things like high quality drinking water, treatment of wastewater, parks and recreational facilities, cemeteries, roadways, sidewalks, rail trails, snow and ice control, traffic signals, stormwater, and flood control systems, to name a few. This year's theme, because of public works, is particularly true for Northampton. Look around your community and take note what public work does for you. Public works staff cares deeply about serving the city and takes quiet pride in their work. We're truly honored with this proclamation. Uh, as Public Works Week, we are providing me uh, tours to the public on Tuesday, May 21st and Thursday, May 23rd at 9 a.m at the following facilities, the water treatment plant at 137 Mountain Street in Haydenville, the wastewater treatment plant and flood control facility at 33 Hockman Road in Northampton, and lastly, the public works barn, which we propose to have replaced at some point in the future at 125 Locust Street. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, I'm gonna ask the council to uh, suspend the rules while I will late file for presentation from the Northampton Youth Commission. Move to suspend the rule. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Northampton Youth Commission, step up. Hello, I'm Emma West, and this is Joni Sullivan, and we are the co-chairs of Northampton Youth Commission. Uh, we are a group made up of Northampton youth from the high school, the middle school, PVPA, and New Directions. Uh, we meet twice a month and we discuss city issues and um, current events. And today we are here to talk about gun control. Um, due to current or er, recent events in Connecticut and at our own school, Northampton High School, we um, focused this year on stricter gun controls and we all separately went to our own schools and talked to classmates and peers um, of a petition that we wrote up on stricter gun laws and we were able to receive over 250 signatures from all the public and surrounding schools and what it is. Um, we're just hoping that rather than having an impact, I mean it would be great if we could have an impact on legislative reform, but we're more hoping to just have our voice as the youth be heard because with these topics, they're often dominated by adults. And I want to emphasize the fact that the petition is signed solely by the youth aged 13 to 18 from middle school and high school. And I'm just going to quickly read through it so you have a sense of um, what we believe. In light of recent events, discussions concerning public access to firearms have saturated the media. Representing America's youth, we, the underside, 
undersigned believe it is vital to achieve stricter gun control programs in America. We support buyback programs, universal background checks, ensuring schools are gun-free environments, a ban on private ownership of assault weapons, a ban on large capacity magazines. The Mayor's Youth Commission of Northampton presents this petition calling for resolution by the Northampton City Council for Gun Control. And we're just hoping for general support from the community, starting locally, hopefully we can gain some momentum here. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions, the council? Are there, are there any other speakers? Any questions from the council? Um, I, I'd just like to say, uh, I'm the council liaison for the, the youth commission, and uh, this was at their inspiration and their impetus. And uh, it's, I, it, it, I think we can all think back to what happened after Sandy Hook, and there was a level of tension that was pervasive throughout the, the country. And in Northampton, we experienced uh, lockdown middle school and at the high school and uh, you know it has it had a direct impact so um, I'm grateful for the work that you guys did and we'll it's up to us now we have to we have to draw up a resolution for you so um, sure how many signatures did you have over 250 that we have them here if you sure. could present them to the to the clerk and the secretary which will take care of those in a bit and the council will get copies of that, and yeah, uh, so the char it's on us now. We got to draft up a resolution to, to honor your petition. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're back to business. Uh, the mayor, back to our regular programming. Um, mayor's going to present his budget, so I don't know who wants to stay or not for that. Yeah, you know what? While while he's passing out, I oh want to do uh, one minute announcements. Why don't we do that while this is being discussed? Uh, anyone have a one minute announcement? Do we? Yes, I do. Uh, Florence Memorial Day Parade, Thank you. which uh, is, as I understand it, the oldest Memorial Day parade that's been continuously operating in the country, and it's what's Monday, the twenty seventh, I think. Monday the 27th, it kicks off at 10 o'clock at Trinity Royal Park. Councilor Bard will be there. I'll be there. Will the banner be there? <laughs> yeah. That's the $64,000 oh, question. Will the banner be there? Yeah. But I just want to remind everybody that uh, we'll all be there, and we hope you are too. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels? <laughs> I just felt that you. Oh, and then Councilor, uh, Councilor LaBarge, you're being uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels the first to you. Uh, just a reminder, you all have a little flyer on your desk. Um, Sojourner Truth Memorial statue. There will be an annual celebration on Sunday, May 26th. Um, 12.30 p.m. will be the walking tour. And the regular celebration will start at 2 o'clock p.m. at the Park in Pine Street in Florence. Also, every one of us counselors received in the mayor and us counselors received from um, Ned Huntley, the director of the Board of Public Works. The Glendale Road landfill will be closed on May 17th, 2013 at 3 o'clock p.m. to all users and will not reopen. The capacity to accept waste is finished. The residential services no waste or recyclables will continue on Saturdays as previously announced. Thank you from Ned Huntley, our director of the Board of Public Works. Uh, Council, who, someone's got to go. Who wants to go? To <laughs> Council, <Yeah. Daisy>. um, <laughs> So at the Memorial Day Parade now this year, we were uh, working on a flyover. We did not have one last year. And when I had spoke to the commander at uh, Westover, he said, he didn't know sequestration was his answer. Yet, they fly over my house and my job site continuously, daily. So the answer is sequestration, I don't believe. That's my announcement. I'm hoping for a flyover on Memorial Day Parade. Timing, I guess. Maybe we'll get a drone. <laughs> 
Uh, Wednesday, May 29th, the Meadows City Conservation Coalition, a new um, organization created um, under the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association, but now its own independent organization, will be having its spring meeting at, at Bridge Street School in the cafeteria at 7 p.m. That's Wednesday, May 29th. It's an illustrated talk on the Northampton levy system. Um, it's uh, subtitled, Living with and Maintaining Our Levees, Safety and Flood Protection. Uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, New England District, uh, Mr. Steve Machalik will be giving a, a, a talk. Um, the uh, Meadows City Conservation Coalition holds uh, conservation restrictions in war, the War Three area, and um, they usually put on <coughs> some pretty excellent uh, discussions. What's the date? May 29th. May 29th. Also for, uh, can I, do you Please. mind if I just do a couple more? Thank you. Um, I've said it a few times, but I'll say it again. This Sunday, May 19th, is at the Stork Northampton is the Graham Cracker uh, Art Show and Festival starting at 2 o'clock. There will be a band. There will be uh, uh, lots of art with, made up of Graham Crackers. There will be a brief history presented of Sylvester Graham, and uh, I'm, it turns out I'm emceeing it. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. <laughs> and then finally, finally, for any Ward 3 residents who are paying attention, um, June 2nd, we're going to have a block party at uh, Montview um, from 2 o'clock on. Uh, it's uh, open to all Ward 3 residents, and I'm extending the invitation to the council. Thank you very much. Uh, any other announcements? All right, Your Honor, uh, you may present your budget. Thank you. Good evening again. Um, so you have before you my proposed fiscal year 2014 budget. I would uh, read now the budget message uh, to the public. To the honorable members of the city council, I submit for your consideration and approval my proposed $96,262,079 fiscal year 2014 budget for the city of Northampton in accordance with section 7-3 of our charter. This budget is comprised of an $81,174,053 general fund, together with enterprise funds for water, $6,537,076, sewer, $7,142,942, and solid waste, $1,408,008, and represents a 0.6% increase from fiscal year 2013. This budget involved many difficult decisions due to the ongoing structural imbalance between increased fixed costs and a lack of sufficient revenues to fund them. A $1.4 million budget gap exists between projected revenues and the cost of maintaining our current level of services and staff for FY 2014. As a result, we have proposed significant cuts in both city and school operating budgets to achieve a balanced budget. This includes the elimination of 15.35 full-time equivalent positions, cuts to maintenance and supply budgets, and reductions in service capabilities across all departments, including public safety, education, public works, and recreation. The Northampton Police Department will see the elimination of four full-time officer positions. These staffing reductions will have a significant impact on their 24-7 operations, reducing the number of officers on our streets, and their ability to respond to serious and violent incidents in our community. The Northampton Public Schools, our largest city department, will experience the deepest cuts with reductions in teachers, aides, and programs across all schools in core subjects, special education, arts, music, technology, and libraries. Additionally, fees for sports and school lunches will be increased, funding for supplies and textbooks decreased, and bus transportation for Northampton High School students eliminated entirely. On June 25, 2013, the residents of Northampton will have the final say as to whether these significant cuts are implemented. This city council approved a special municipal election for that day, seeking resident approval for the city of Northampton to raise an additional $2.5 million in local tax revenue above the limits of Proposition 2.5. If adopted, we would have the revenue capacity to close our FY 2014 budget gap and restore and maintain level services over the next four fiscal years.
The budget I am submitting today does not presume the outcome of that vote, however, and is balanced using only the revenues currently available to us. The general fund will see projected revenues increase by 1.85 million, or 2.3 percent for FY 2014. Almost 1.7 million of that new revenue is in local property taxes and new growth. Significant revenue increases in parking meter receipts, $111,304, and parking fines, $52,600, were outpaced by revenue decreases in ambulance receipts, negative $84,569, interest income, negative $48,500, and MSBA reimbursement, negative $367,721. Net state aid is projected to increase by $154,132, or 1.5 percent, but is still over $1.1 million less than the amount allocated to Northampton just five years ago. The steady erosion of state aid and concurrent increases in state charges for Northampton students who choose to attend charter schools and other districts via school choice is the largest single factor affecting our budget over the last several years. If Northampton's net state aid had remained level funded since 2002, the city would have had over $35 million more to work with over the past dozen years. Fixed costs represented more than half of the increases in, the gen in general fund expenditures. These increased expenses included closing an overlay deficit primarily related to a 2009 Verizon abatement, $256,043, increased retirement system assessment, $240,285, veterans benefits, $100,000, Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School Appropriation, $92,677, school choice, charter school, and other state assessments, $91,235, workers' comp and unemployment, $61,163, Overlay to cover future abatements, $54,585. Legal services, $45,000. And our increased municipal appropriation requirement to maintain library certification, $21,239. The remaining expenditure increases primarily went to the Northampton Public Schools, $519,126, and much needed infusions to cash capital and stabilization reserves, $325,000. We recently received, achieved an historic breakthrough with one of our single largest cost drivers, health insurance. Last year's budget required us to absorb an $817,536 increase in health insurance premiums, which was achieved through cuts to services and personnel. I indicated then that I would file an order for Northampton to adopt the state's new municipal health insurance reform law to help us contain those costs. I thank the City Council for helping me achieve that goal with its adoption of Mass General Law Chapter 32B, Sections 21 through 23 on October 4th, 2012. Using this new law and process, we reached, actually on Tuesday of this week, a three-year agreement with all city and school unions to transfer the City of Northampton into the Massachusetts Group Insurance Commission GIC Health Plan on January 1st, 2014. This move will result in an estimated $1.3 million in health insurance premium savings in 2014, 331,000 of which we have agreed to set aside for employees and retirees to help mitigate any negative financial impacts of the transition. More immediately, our overall budget line item for health insurance in FY14 reflects a 0.7% cost decrease versus the projected 6.75% increase Northampton was facing back in February. I want to publicly thank the leadership of our city and school employee unions for working collaboratively with us to enact this critical change. This budget includes much needed investments in rebuilding our reserve accounts, both to provide for unforeseen expenses and to maintain our excellent bond rating. We also continue to make progress toward adequately funding some of our historically underfunded accounts, like veterans and legal services. Our efforts to create more realistic budgets for these and other accounts have reduced our reliance on free cash transfers to fund the operating budget by more than 50 percent 
since FY 2011. An integrated capital plan outlining $1,719,749 in high priority investments in buildings, equipment, vehicles, and technology as recommended to me by the Capital Improvement Program Committee is also included in this FY 2014 budget. We propose to fund the plan through a combination of cash capital, reprogrammed capital funds, free cash, reserve and revolving funds, and bonding. The capital plan narrative also outlines my decision to defer replacement of the Locust Street DPW facility given our current debt capacity and obligations. I am pleased to report significant progress in addressing our unfunded compensatory time liability. This issue was flagged in my FY 2013 budget in which we allocated funds to pay down comp time balances that had far exceeded allowable time limits under city policies or collective bargaining agreements. Through the implementation of new reporting procedures and regular, regular monitoring of balances, we have reduced the city's overall comp time liability by 27%. And as we close the current fiscal year, all city employees will be at or below their respective compensatory time caps. The FY 2013 budget also effectuated a major reorganization of our city's parking operations. This was done to reduce staff and costs, improve efficiency and customer service, and implement better financial management and oversight as identified by our outside auditor. These efforts have been very successful. In our most recent management letter from Scanlon and Associates, our auditor reported that all previous areas of concern had been corrected and proper fiscal controls are now in place. Another major area of concern that was addressed when we eliminated the parking department and merged its maintenance and enforcement functions into existing departments was overtime. I am pleased to report that parking overtime has been reduced by almost 76% bringing annual overtime costs down from over $40,000 in FY 2011, prior to reorganization, to under $10,000 in FY 2013, after reorganization. I remain committed to ensuring that we deliver our residents quality, cost-effective city services while being good stewards of taxpayer dollars. My administration continues to aggressively pursue opportunities for savings and innovation whether through the use of technology, like our new mobile app for reporting potholes and other quality of life issues, or through our ongoing Northampton STAT data collection and performance management program. This commitment to reviewing all areas of government also extends to how our city provides K-12 education, which is why I am engaging our community in a conversation about unifying the Northampton Public Schools and Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School in ways that can strengthen both institutions and provide greater opportunities for students. In closing this budget message, I must reiterate that our single greatest challenge remains the structural imbalance between increasing fixed costs and the lack of revenues to meet them. Northampton has adopted and implemented all of the local options offered to us by state government for increasing local revenues, from meals and hotel motel taxes, to the CPA, to now, most recently, municipal health insurance reform. I call upon our state leaders to give us more tools to increase revenues and implement efficiencies to reduce costs. If state aid to cities and towns remains at current levels, and there is no political will to revisit outdated and unfair aid formulas, we must demand more local revenue authority from state government to let us control our own fiscal destiny. I remain committed to working with the City Council, the School Committee, and all City residents to seek the funding and or local revenue authority we need to adequately fund our public schools, our police and fire, <coughs> our infrastructure, and other vital city programs and services. I want to thank Finance Director Susan Wright for helping create this budget document and for her steady and tireless oversight of our city finances. Thank you to Lynn Simmons of my staff for her work compiling, editing, and formatting many documents, charts, and spreadsheets into a clear, readable document. Thank you to Kareen Philippides of my staff for organizing and managing the many details related to meetings, calls, and public forums involving the budget process. 
I want to also acknowledge our department heads for working with me to develop individual budgets for their organizations and the hardworking men and women who deliver services daily for our city and schools. Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank the residents of Northampton. For the second year in a row, I held a series of six town hall budget meetings across the city to outline our fiscal challenges and hear directly from residents about their budget priorities, questions, and ideas. This budget has my name on the cover, but it's ultimately every citizen's budget in defining the kind of community we want to live in. I look forward to working with the City Council over the next several weeks to answer any questions about this budget or provide additional information it may need. Should the voters approve a Proposition 2 and a half override on June 25, 2013, I will be prepared to revise this proposed FY 2014 budget to reflect increased appropriations to city and school departments and the creation of an override stabilization fund. Respectfully submitted, David Jane Arkowitz, Mayor. And I wanted to just add a couple of other quick points about the document itself. Uh, we've been striving to, um, to add more detail. Uh, you'll find this year, because of the charter change, we now have the completed school department budgets, uh, which were voted on, which have now been incorporated into the document under schools. Mm -hmm. We also have a couple of new uh, features that we wanted to talk about. Um, we are now trying to uh, begin tracking, we started this last year, um, the actual number of city employees. Uh, so you'll now see a um, table at the back of the expenditure area. Uh, it looks like this, which is broken down by city department, uh, by, uh, by area, and then there's a total. Um, and it tracks the number of FTEs, full-time employees, in those departments. Uh, so you can actually uh, follow it down to the very bottom, total of all departments, and you can see the change from FY13 uh, to FY14, and that's the 15.35 number that I'm referring to, but then you can see the individual changes in the number of employees. I know one of the questions and concerns um, we often hear is, is the city adding employees? Is the city losing employees? We are, we're proposing to begin tracking this so that we can provide historical data uh, for people. The other thing right before that chart, you'll note that in, in accordance with the charter, we've now added a section on elected officials' compensation, which is now a requirement of the charter. That that's supposed to be called out separately uh, in, the, um, in the budget. Um, we've added some, new, some additional tabs this year, so it's easier to get to different parts of the budget. We continue to, to provide um, historical data on each of the, uh, and now we've added some additional color to make it easier to, to chart. Um, historical budget data so you can see uh, not only uh, how the budgets have changed within each, each individual department, but how many FTEs uh, per unit, number of full-time employees. We also have uh, sections on debt. Uh, uh, well, the enterprise funds are broken out, the schools are broken out. We have information on debt service, which provides uh, updates on where we are, for example, with debt-excluded projects. Um, taking a look at our debt uh, with various funding sources, information on and including historical information on retirement, unemployment, um, and, and other uh, benefit plans, more detailed information about health insurance. Uh, the capital plan, which you may recall we sort of did out of sequence in January, the capital plan is actually embedded in this document as well. So there's a narrative uh, for you uh, that describes the capital plan. Um, and, uh, and it goes through the various investments uh, that we're recommending. Um, and then it's followed up um, by the budget orders themselves. Uh, and so um, that completes uh, the budget. Um, we, um, uh, it was done by the printer about 5 o'clock uh, <laughs> this evening, a couple hours to spare. Um, and I can say that it is online right now. So if people go to the city's homepage and look over to the right-hand column um, and they scroll down, they'll see a link that says Mayor's Proposed FY 2014 Budget. And the entire document that I have in front of me is there in a PDF format uh, that people can search and read through. Um, so that's it. I'll answer any questions that you might have or... Uh, well. Um, if you allow me, I'm going to actually make some announcements and then open up the floor, but the announcements of the budget hearings, it seems like an appropriate time. Um, this will be the official announcement. It's, it's been posted. 
of uh, announcement of City Council FY 2014 budget hearings with City Departments on Wednesday, May 29th, 2013, and Thursday, May 30th, 2013, uh, each at 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Uh, uh, the, let's see, there's also the public hearing Thursday, June 6, 2013, 7.05, regarding the mayor's proposed FY 2014 budget. It'll also be here in Council Chambers. Um, and then another <laughs> hearing, which is uh, June 30th, 2013, which is also a Thursday. June, 30th. Uh, June I'm sorry. I say. Right? Was I, okay. What's the date there? June, uh, yeah. June 20th, 2013, June. 7 05 p.m. And this is regarding the Department of Public Works at 125 Locust Street and the application for license of storage fuel. Um, and then while I got it, I've only got, I've got two, okay. There's also uh, June 20th, 2013 to 7, 10 p.m. And this is regarding the public, uh, uh, Department of Public Works, 33 Hockenham Road, applications for license for storage of fuel, and an announcement of the city council meeting Thursday, June 27th at 7 p.m. That's a special meeting. This is all concerning the budget. And also, as you'll see, that it corresponds with after the election so that the mayor can meet all the deadlines required by law. Your Honor, I, I give the floor back to you. Um, any questions? Uh, just Council a respect for us on your It's hand. not a question, just a statement of thank you very much for the uh, for this budget and the way it's presented, uh, especially this opening, your opening statement, your opening message. Uh, I think it lays out with, you know, incredible clarity what is, lays the groundwork of why we are where we are. I like the specificity that you have in here of, where things have gone up and where they've gone down. And specifically, I want to applaud you for both your vision before this, but your work on the health insurance, which is, I felt like applauding while you, when you said it, of the amount of money that has been saved by the city and the work you did on that. So I want to thank you a lot for doing that. And um, I don't know if the citizens realize just how, how bad a shape we could be in if the increase was the normal increase that we you know, had budgeted and looked at. And so I think it was incredibly important that that happened and I appreciate the work you did and the other people who worked on it. Thank you. Thank you. Council Lombard. Yes. Mayor, thank you very much for doing this um, budget. And Susan, I want to thank you very, very much. You put in a lot of hours and you're great. You really are. <laughs> I'm so pleased to have you as our financial director and working along with our mayor. I also want to thank Lynn Simmons for the hard work of putting this together and also Corrine. I mean, this does not happen overnight. And Mayor, thank you for all the budget hearings that you did throughout the city. It was very respected by many people who attended in Ward 6. They were very pleased with that. And I know we have homework to do, so thank you for the budget book. Thank you. Uh, also, I, I thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, for this, uh, this presentation. And uh, it would be premature for me to assume anything isn't in here, but I am I'm, I'm looking at the debt uh, section. Is it possible by one of the next hearings that we could see the, some of the projected debt service, not just for FY2014, but future years and, and, sure. and, maybe it and actually has, if you look maybe uh, it's maybe it's in there I, I just yeah in the, if you actually look in the capital plan narrative um, there's actually a second a section this would be on page uh, 210 actually um, where I'm actually discussing the, the, the I see it. concerns about the DPW facility and we've taken and projected out to 2020 um, what our what our currently programmed debt is so we've got some information in there, and I think we can, we can certainly provide you thank other you. information. Thank well. you. I this is, I just wasn't looking at the right spot. Yeah, so no, it's, a, it's it is a little larger document. We're obviously trying to keep it as concise as possible. But the addition of the school to school budgets is a part of the reason that makes it feel a little heftier this year as well. Um, those are usually s separate uh, documents. So, and I also wanted to point out for the first time as well. We actually have line item information from our two libraries, uh, which is a new feature that we've 
worked with the staff and, and trustees of the two libraries um, to provide more line item detail about this, the staffing and, and the way those funds are spent. Um, they are obviously independently um, uh, managed institutions, but uh, the majority of that funding is taxpayer dollars. So I felt it was important to show that to show that detail in uh, this budget. So that's a new thing as well this year. Council Tacey and then Council <coughs> I want to thank you very much for this. This is, uh, I was pleased with the level of detail in last year's budget, and I haven't not read through this yet, but I can see that there's a lot more to this budget book than there was to last year's. And I will, when I get back home and get my more powerful glasses, I will be able to catch some of these numbers, the font size. I know that to get it on here must have been difficult. So uh, I want to thank you for that, and. Uh, one of the most important things that was in the bu budget message, I call upon our state leaders to give us more tools to increase revenues and implement efficiencies to reduce cost. And it goes on to talk about the state of the cities, how much more we would have had, which myself and I know Councilor Murphy continues to hammer on. And I want to thank you for putting that in there. It's important. And um, I see a couple other things in the message, and I'm glad to see that you appear not to be able, not to be too worried about getting your hands dirty. And putting this budget together. And I want to thank you very much for that. And Susan Wright, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Mayor, I, I know when you came forth before, I had stated that a couple of city employees had approached me in regards to, with the Prop 2.5 in 2009, was there actually a layoff with employees? Or did somebody retire and not fill those positions? And you did state that you would check that out for me and give me some verification on that. Uh, um, 2009 will be, uh, we, can, we, can, we can try. One of the issues we found was that um, many of the departments, particularly the schools, are not, had not, have not been tracking sort of total FTEs. And so we're now trying to implement that starting last my first budget, FY13 to FY14. We can try to do some research on that um, and see what we can find out. Um, I, I know one of, the, one of the issues it raises, so for example, there, um, I, I guess the way I want to make sure that people understand it is uh, when I say that we're eliminating, for example, four positions in the police department, that means four less, that means four less positions in the police department. Now, it may, may well be that someone will retire um, is retiring, for example, in June, we're not going to fill that position. I, I mean, I know for a fact that um, we're going to probably end up moving a detective, a sergeant out of the detective bureau and not having a sergeant there because we need that person on the street. Um, so it's still going to, you're going to have four less police officers in your police force, uh, but in terms of how those reductions happen, it may be retirement, it may be, uh, it, it may be layoffs. Um, you know, there's at once at least one layoff here in the city um, hall uh, or city municipal area. Um, but in terms of those reductions, those will go into effect on July 1. Uh, so the schools and the city will have to, to, to make preparations for that. Okay, I'm just repeating yeah. what I was asked okay. as a council to ask you who actually got laid off. In 2009? In 2009, with the Prop 2 and a half, did they actually get laid off? Okay. Or if somebody was retiring, you just did not fill that position, and they slid into a position. So I'm just asking you okay. as the city councilor mayor of the city employees who've approached me on that question. Okay. Well, I can do our, my best. Obviously, Ms. Wright and I, we're not here, in two, we're not in our positions in 2009, but we can try to do some research. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Carney. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I also want to reiterate how uh, uh, grateful I am for the work that you've done on this and the in incredible detail. And also let folks at home know, because of the immediacy that with which this is available to Folks viewing at home, they can go right on the city's website, and there's a link uh, right there with everything that we are looking at tonight. So I would encourage uh, people, if they have questions prior to those hearings, which are also open meetings, to look through this budget. And I'm sure they'll also be impressed. Thank you. Thank you. 
and it was not, I, I didn't realize it, but I guess even my, my, I picked the right suit tonight to wear. So <laughs> yes. so yeah. Anyway, shouldn't, that wasn't planned, but there you I'm have it. I'm sure. There it is. Okay. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you very you. much. You. And I look forward to working with you as you hold your hearings and, uh, and other meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Back on track. Uh, we're up to licenses. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where are we? We're in council chambers downtown Northampton. Uh, uh, this has come back. Uh, this is a report and recommendation of the Board of Public Works to the City of uh, Council for Bradford Street South. Um, do you want me to read? Do you want me to read this or? No. We went through that. We did last time. Yeah. And uh, uh, this time we have uh, the the director and the chair of the Board of Public Works and the director of the Department of Public Works here for, for your questions and answers. Move to recognize Ned Huntley. Well, we have to move it first. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, need, both of I need a motion first. I, I move for the sake of discussion. Second. All right. Uh, and then there's a motion to recognize uh, Terry Cullen and, and uh, Ned Huntley. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Gentlemen? Uh, good evening. So am I in? Yes. Oh, I was <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to start with questions? Okay, Councilor Freeman. Uh, Mr. Colleen, thank you for uh, um, for coming this evening. The reason that uh, I, I, I at the last meeting I asked for a map of the um, streets that we were disapproving uh, and. I was being pretty irresponsible because I just just told the council, oh, I think we need a map, but I, I never reached out to anyone to actually, <laughs> anyone who might be in the position to actually provide a map. <laughs> so um, I uh, apologize if, if this is the first you've heard of it because I, it was probably my job to ask the DPW or, or the Board of Public Works for a map of, of, uh, of these streets that we weren't approving. Uh, so I, if you're not prepared for tonight, I, I apologize. My understanding is the questions were related to Center Court yeah. and the Bradford, Bradford South, South part of Bradford Street. Right. And I th think you have diagrams for Bradford you Street. Go. You didn't even. Uh, I think we got diagrams. Uh, Ned had sent us diagrams for the easement on uh, <coughs> Graves. I don't have a. Mm -mm. Let's see. I believe I forwarded uh, at least two maps of each location along. Mm -mm. Uh, I have a larger question. So uh, while, while we're while we're looking, I I'm still going to take responsibility for. I'll, I'm going to take the blame on this one because I just I, I did not do my homework and actually ask anyone <coughs> who has any ability to produce a map to actually bring one in. Uh, so I, I I apologize. Okay, the se the secretary asked us. Okay. So. The impression I got from the email that we received is that you had some questions about just our general procedure for evaluating streets and then some specific questions about those two particular streets. Uh, so if I, if I may start just with our broad procedure. <coughs> um, so the issue is we've been told we may no longer plow private ways. Uh, our intention is to bring as many of the city's private ways that we are currently following into the fold of recognized city streets as we possibly can. We've started uh, holding hearings on batches of these approximately 40 streets in question. Uh, we're, uh, Saturday this week, we're doing six more. Um, as we work our way through the list, we go to each street we have notified in advance the residents along those streets and we have a public hearing we invite everyone on the street or anyone else who might be interested to give us all of their comments relative to the pros and cons of accepting a particular street <coughs> within the board and then at our, our <coughs> subsequent meeting we vote among ourselves as to whether or not we would recommend that the city council accept a particular street on the negative side 
our vote would be that we feel a particular street does not meet reasonable criteria to be become um, to be considered as an acceptable city street. So we, the vote is either that we recommend the city council accept it, or we feel feel it fails to meet reasonable criteria. The criteria that we look at are uh, first of all an evaluation of the street: is it a dead end, or is it a through street? How many houses have frontage on the street? Is there off street parking for the residents? In other words, in a snow emergency, can they pull into a driveway? Uh, does it receive much non-residential traffic? Is, uh, in the case of a dead-end street, is this primarily people getting to their driveway? Or does, is it a city street in the sense that all sorts of residents are using the street? If it's a connector, is it an important connector? For example, Depot Street in Florence by Florence Paint behind the Florence Diner behind Florence Savings Bank, that's a fairly important connector uh, and a way of bypassing Main Street in Florence. Is the road paved? Does the roadway need immediate repairs? Uh, is there sufficient width for a reasonable layout? Uh, and does that width allow for two-way traffic? Um, are there city utilities beneath the road? Who owns those utilities? Are they city utilities or is it someone's private water line coming out to the Main Street to connect to a city water main. Um, are there any Tyler historical issues that need to be considered, or are there other factors of particular importance? We deliberately didn't make this so open and shut that you merely had to go down, check the boxes, and at the bottom it would say, yes, you're a city street, no, you're not a city, city street. Mm -hmm. There are cases where you might go one way or the other uh, depending on other factors other than the street itself. Some of these streets look just like a city street. Some look like a dirt driveway. Those are easy. It's the ones in the middle that are just kind of messy. And we felt we needed some latitude for making decisions uh, based on, I, I hate to say common sense, uh, that's the wrong term. I'm looking for a word. Uh, based on our judgment as to what to do with those in between those middle decisions. If I could move on to the particulars of those two streets. Uh, first of all, Bradford Street, if you think about Bradford turning at Wright Builders uh, at the entrance to the industrial park, if you drive down Bradford Street, in the old days you would turn left at the end of, or turn right at the end of the street to go to the cable company. Mm -hmm. Or you can le turn left and go down to, is it Woodmont? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's, that connector from the industrial park over to the T is a city street. The question is what happens when you turn right heading up toward Cable Vision or left toward Woodmont? Those are private ways. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> regarding the north section, the city is going to build a sewer from the um, industrial park down to the pump station by the, the, the rail trail. And we thought it would be important to take that section going up past cable vision because we want to rip it up, frankly, and put the sewer underneath that roadbed. So we voted to recommend that you accept that street. So they just played the Continental, Continental Cable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the section going south to Woodmont uh, provides access to the rail trail. Um, and it's a connector to Woodmont. Uh, we voted to recommend that you accept that. Now, if you can picture in your mind going to the end of the T, turn left toward Woodmont, 50 yards down, there's a small street to your left. It serves two houses. It's not nearly as wide as the space between the desks here. Uh, it's maybe two thirds of that distance. There's no way, for example, for two way traffic to happen. It's basically a very well-paved driveway to two houses, in, in our, uh, to our opinion. Um, there's virtually no non-residential traffic. Uh, there's nowhere to go, just two houses. In our opinion, that street didn't seem like a reasonable city street. We don't see that as a, we couldn't find justification for calling that a city street. 
access. The planning department, the planning board, uh, took no recommendation on that street. They feel, and now I'm looking at the uh, planning board's notes, <coughs> determining whether or not to accept that street, they feel is a political decision. It's, there's no technical reason to call it a street. So that's a different approach. We said it failed to meet reasonable criteria to become a city street. They just made no recommendation. Um, that's all I have about it. I think that's called the Bradford Street extension. Uh, no, well, that's called South Bradford Street. Passing the map around on my on my iPad. Uh, Council from Daniels, you, you know this. Yeah, I live there. Uh, thank you for the, um, the the discussion for folks who aren't familiar with the uh, street. <clears throat> but uh, what I'm really looking for is um, I'm, I'm especially on these disapprovals. I, I really think it's important to have a map of what the board has suggested we do not the council and the city do not accept um, so, so at least to have a line so that there isn't a so that there isn't bickering basically about what is the responsibility of the city and what is the responsibility of the of the uh, of the, of the, the private <coughs> way holders mm -hmm. uh, and I, and uh, you know I, I I drive by there on a daily basis I walk by there I I live basically five houses down so I, I know it and I can pretty much guess where you would possibly demarcate the way, but I really think it's important that with these orders, especially, we see where you'd like to where you would like to stop the public way and so on. And so I, I actually don't. I'm going to say this again. I, I said it last time. I really don't have a policy problem with disapproving of this particular one, but I, I do have a problem proceeding without a map. None of the petitioners live on uh, Bradford Street Extension. And in fact, actually, I, I recognize these most of the petitioners working in office. But they, they, um, and was that to uh, bring it forward to address it, to shoot it down? Because the concern is, is I'm not sure about the residents, if they've been contacted or understand what's being decided here one way or the other, the two houses, as you point out. Um, I don't know to what extent their understanding of the process is because it can't be great because my understanding of the process is minimal at this point. So maybe you could expand on that a little bit. Um, our intention was to have streets referred to the Department, to the Board of Public Works in a somewhat orderly fashion. So we could once a month look at six streets. Uh, and it was explained to us that, in fact, any six residents of Northampton can petition mm -hmm. to have a street accepted. Um, in some cases, residents of streets have gone ahead on their own and, and presented the petitions. But our understanding was <clears throat> we could just to get the ball rolling, we could present a petition. Once your body refers it back to our body, uh, the people are notified by a certified letter um, and, in fact, the residents of that South South Extension or the South Bradford South were at the meeting. Um, is, is that just good fortune, or is that a, a process, a, a consequence of process? I mean, they actually showed up because they were aware. My concern is well, they they had each received a registered letter. Yeah, certified mail. Yeah. Can I just ask a clarifying question, Chairman Colling? Um, you re they received a letter, and you you brought the board. To the to their neighborhood. Yes, we on a Saturday on afternoon on a Saturday morning. Yes, and they knew that you were coming on that yes. date at that time. Yes, and they came and joined you and spoke with you, mm -hmm. and they also then also they had also received notice about any other times, or you also told them at that meeting that, about the upcoming dates at which you might discuss these. Yes, okay. thank you. That 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 sort of something. Uh, Council Schwartz, I think Council Murphy, did you have your hand up as well? Yeah, I'll get okay, so in the mix. Council Schwartz and then Council Murphy. I, just want to, I think I just want to confirm what it is that I know, which is that up until this, for 
for time immemorial, or I don't know if there's a date they have been plowed. I mean, have the, the written, in, if this disapproval equals the end of a service they've been receiving, is that true? Yes. And and for how and they've been there for a really long time. I'm just curious about the human element in this. There are streets that we've plowed for um, decades. Yeah. The there was a there's a lawsuit in the town of Wellfleet. And I don't know exactly who was challenging the ability of the town to plow a private way, but one way or the other, it was either someone who wanted their private way plowed also, or someone who objected to that use of public funds. But however it went, uh, the determination of the courts was that uh, it's inappropriate to use public money to plow what is essentially private property. Uh, so the state solicitor general has ruled that we, we all, all municipalities need to cease Type of operation. Um, we've been working on this for a few years. And <laughs> a few. Uh, if I may just follow. So my point is that it's not a matter of historical precedence. Well, it's not a matter of this. Whether we continue plowing or not. Yeah. Right. No, clearly. I understand. Te legally, that's, can't, that's not a factor. Correct. Right. Emotionally, that feels all wrong. Right. Yeah. So we started on this exercise based on snow plowing, as I understand it, to determine were they streets or were they not for snow plowing. Now, one of your criteria was, is there infrastructure in these streets? Is there water and sewer in these streets? Yes. And in some instances, I'm assuming there's going to be streets that you're going to decide you don't want. They got water and sewer in them. Right. All right. So they're there. Did you put them there? Did we put them there? How did they get there? Uh, in, in a few cases, they were private lines that the city has sort of taken over. Uh, in other cases, we have put them there. Um, and in some of those cases, we have an easement. And in other cases, the record is murky. So what happens to a resident on one of those discontinued streets if there is a major failure in what for years has been considered to be city infrastructure? Does that mean you're not responsible to maintain them any longer? I mean, if I'm at the end of a what is, becomes a private way and my sewer line collapses, am I going to have to dig up 500 feet of sewer line and, and capitalize to fix that? We discussed that at the public hearings we've had so far in our conversation with the residents and the abutters of those streets was that they were city utilities that were installed that we would seek easements to maintain those going forward if the, if the council selected not to accept them as public ways. So that would require further action on our part to continue to provide those municipal services to those houses. Um, unclear on water and sewer, due to the water and sewer commissioners, whether or not those easements would go to city council. Because that would be, you know, snow plowing is one thing, but, you know, a, a failure in, in a sewer line that's 500 feet long that services two houses, you know, suddenly the Board of Health is knocking on their door if they can't afford to fix the sewer line saying you can't live here anymore. And that, that's a little much for us to, I think, burden somebody with that thought they were in a public way. So I'd want to be clear what that implication would be on some of these streets if, if we discontinue. Mm -hmm. Councilor Spector and then Councilor Tacey and then Councilor yeah. Yeah. Terry, thanks for the... Uh, beginning on to Councillor Schwartz's question, if I may just add a little bit, because I think we've been here for not just a few years, but I think it's six, six years. And it is, uh, just to clarify if, for members who haven't been part of the discussion with our joint committee, it is there, most of these residents have assumed that their streets were city streets. Many of these, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was just through bureaucracy. Many of these streets just were, they never came through the city council process. Somehow they got lost. And many of those are easy answers. Some of the others, who knows why they got plowed? Maybe they knew the counselor from Ward 4 and you know, they were their cousin and they said, well, start plowing here in 1947 and it's been plowed ever since. And it's one long driveway. And we have a few of those. And I think those are the ones you're saying. So there are easy calls, there are some easy calls that are obviously not a city street. There are many that are easy calls because they obviously are city streets and they just got kind of lost in the mix over time. And it is that gray area that's really tough because here are people who bought houses, thought they were city streets, and now we're finding out they're not. 
and I agree with Councilor Murphy, I think we have to be clear on all these issues before we move forward because I think clearly if it's snow plowing that's still a burden you got three or four people I've got a street up now they've got three or four people that will share the snow plowing it's a short street it's a burden but they can handle it but if suddenly you're talking about you know a few hundred yards of a sewer line needing repair that is you know that's something that we really have to look at and be clear about so I agree with Councilor Murphy on that but that wasn't initially why I raised my hand um, <coughs> initially was it's unusual for us to have a not recommend. And so part of this is just a process question on why we're voting on the not recommend rather than waiting on this that you're, you know, you guys are doing this process. They're not streets now, Correct. right? So what is, <clears throat> what is it you're asking from us in the not recommend vote <clears throat> because they're not a city street and normally only the ones that we are <clears throat> recommending would come forward to the city council. Uh, honestly, it hadn't occurred to me that you would also vote to not accept. Um, we felt we had to make a decision street by street because the implications of saying no to a street is that beginning uh, July 1st, FY14, we will no longer plow the street. So we, we, had, we felt that we had to make a concrete decision in each and every case. Um, I hadn't thought through what would happen to those. I, I wasn't anticipating that your board would also, or that the council would also have a vote, mm -hmm. unless you decided, you know, we think the Board of Public Works may have made a mistake in this case. We're going to consider accepting the street anyway. Well, that's my follow-up question. So if we're, because it, it didn't occur to me that we would vote on the not recommend, but that we might have voted and got into, as the planning board had said, some of these streets are political questions, that we would wait, and if you vote to not recommend, any street has the opportunity to come forward with a petition, just six residents need to sign that. That petition coming forward, they then go, it comes here, we refer out, or we decide we won't refer it out, which right. then would be our vote in this thing. Um, I just wanted to be clear about that because it did seem confusing that we were, what you were asking of us. Uh, I certainly appreciate the presentation, but I'm not sure what the vote is exactly. In the case of uh, no recommendation, we, we weren't really asking. We we're just trying to clarify for those okay. residents that Thank we're you. going to plow. Okay. If I may, the, the next street, Center Court, I think really is a perfect example of what, what, what you were just alluding to. Some are tough decisions. Um, Center Court is calling before before we get to the tough decision. Can okay. we at least uh, get sure. some of the other of easy questions out of the way. <laughs> um, if you find uh, the Councilor Tacey was next, and Councilor Bard, and then Councilor Freeman. Okay. <clears throat> First off, being on the conference committee, I share your frustration. I know what you're going through, and I applaud you in every in the way that you're. I can come up with a million different scenarios of what would happen if you accepted this one or didn't accept that one. Because I think Pockhead Avenue, I think, was one that had uh, a private sewer down it. I have built many private ways in the city that have sewer systems and water systems. and um, So I, I, I won't sit and pick apart. I, I can't believe we're having a vote on it actually myself either. I thought this would be strictly in your court, but apparently um, it's not. We've discussed this, uh, I can't think of how many ways and, and, and what would happen if this happened or, but the snow plowing I think is actually one of the most, the minimal thing that it started out to be the big deal. And it really only amounts to 1% of your, of the, the DPW's plowing snow and ice budget, 2%, it's, it's, it's very little. Yes. But it's more than that. It's tremendous. And uh, this law that says now that you can't use public, so what do you do with it? So where do you go? So uh, I guess now it's going to be in our court also. Um, yeah. I, I, I really. Uh, I, I, you, you hate, you'd hate to see any street suddenly have to organize amongst themselves uh, to pay for a snowplower. I, we're, we're as looking for to say yes. Yeah, it'd be mad as a hornet if you all of a sudden said you're not calling yeah. by street anymore. 
in all these years, I bought a house on a city street, snowplow, everything. And all of a sudden, sorry, I don't know. Uh, so the, the decision, I mean, is not anywhere near being made yet. <laughs> it's, it's out there in. Uh, Councilor Barge. Thank you. Um, I have to agree with Councilor Murphy. I think he brought up some really good points <clears throat> about people's property that stays private, but if there's problems that could be very serious, I have to agree with him. I did email um, the director, Ned Huntley, way back on May 1st in regards to the Bradford, Bradford Street extension being recommended and the Bradford Street South. I was really confused about that. I have been down on site and I want to thank you, Ned, very much for sending me that email because it really did explain to me why you would recommend and why you would not recommend. And this is what the email stated that the the BPW looked at these private ways and some criteria that they believe is important as part of its determination process, such as actively used by non-residents, paved, conducive to plowing and snow storage, a through street, two-lane width, number of residents and such criteria that would make these streets act like public ways and non-private driveways. Also, once these become public ways, the city inherits all the issues that exist. Issues may be poor or absent drainage infrastructure, perhaps pavement repairs that would need to be corrected. So Bradford Street extension functions as a through roadway with city utilities installed. So that's why you recommended that, because the, there because there was city utilities and so forth. And it's a connector street. Okay. And we're going to run a sewer. Right down Council Freeman Daniels and Council Schwartz. Thank you. Um, I uh, there are so many issues that I wanted to piggyback on top of, but. Uh, Maybe I can. Maybe we can get some clarity just by, uh, again, by uh, some quick an questions and answers. Um, not, a, you know, ha having a street maintain its status as a private way does not in any way uh, mean that the the um, private holders of that street own city infrastructure. Is that correct? Even if We're the city, even if the city infrastructure is correct. six feet or two feet below the Blow it. It's if, still our infrastructure and our responsibility. So we have to figure out how to get to it, and right. most likely it's in their best, it would be in those private holders' best interest to grant an easement, but they don't have to, and we, and the city could take, take an easement. I, I believe that's If, if absolutely required to get to our assets, which, or our, our infrastructure, which we would be required to fix. Correct. Okay. So that's question one. Question two or issue two, because I, I don't believe that, that uh, the issue of city-owned infrastructure is, is a real uh, problem here. I mean, it, for many of these private ways, the city's been adding to, its, to the infrastructure of those, of those ways, I mean, by patching potholes or, or, or what have you over time. I mean, the, the, the public has been uh, giving to private ways more than it's been, more than it ever has been taking, plus, uh, we're not abandoning any of our of, of our infrastructure. Um, two. This uh, this petition is the purview of the council, so the council would would vote to accept a petition, which is what happened. There was a petition to accept the street. Mm -hmm. What's going on is the petition. We have to decide whether we want this. The council has to decide whether we wish to deny this petition. Is that correct? Deny or or accept this or approve this petition. I don't. I don't know. I, it, it seems like to me it may fail for a lack of a motion to accept a, to rec, to accept. Well, we we made the motion to disapprove the, of the petition. I don't know. We made it. Didn't, oh, oh for discussion purposes. For, 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 for discussion. Okay. So. Discussion. Yes. Okay. Well. 
I second. The motion's on the table to disapprove yes. the petition. Could six other residents of the city make a petition to accept Bradford Street South at some other point in time in the future? I, th I think so. It's already been through the, I, I guess they could. <coughs> Right. If this, how, how often are you going to repeat the process? Well, if you you can imagine the circumstances change, you know, perhaps they they uh, have upgraded the street, or it uh, it becomes a throughway, or or something like that. They could make a new petition to accept the for this. I don't see why not. Street. Okay. So what we're doing is we're considering this petition that the Board of Public Works and the Planning Board have reviewed and have recommended disapproving of this petition. But in the future. A petition could be filed regarding the same street. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that would be true. Okay, thank you, uh, Council Schwartz and Council Carney. Okay, well, I have a different. I had started with a different question, but now I, I feel like I'm genuinely confused about the process here because what I just heard is that we're that we're not that we are, we aren't being asked to vote on whether or not a street is. Is becomes public or not? I mean, if, it, if it's a dis, if it's a no, let me clarify that. If they're recommending for it not to become public, a, a city street, it's not a question that the city council has authority over. Is that true or not? I, I am confused. I, I believe acceptance is solely in your purview. Right. Exactly. Acceptance, mm -hmm. but not rejection. I mean, but you just said you re, you're right that for the streets that you're saying. We do not recommend acceptance. We but feel we need to say that so we can clarify their status for plumbing next month. Right, but we, we don't have to. authority to overrule that. Yes, do. We do. Yes. You can accept the street. Oh, I see. No matter what, we can always accept. I, I understand. Okay. But then why do you have a motion to disapprove of the street? I only made the motion so for the sake of discussion. I said that even when I made work. I know, I believe you. Yeah, yeah. yeah and okay. Okay, May then, I? okay, I'm happy to move on because I have it. I'm happy to keep moving. The, um, I just want to know how many, and forgive me if I should know this, how many streets have been petitioned, I mean, have you reviewed in this capacity and said we don't recommend that it be a city We've street? reviewed, and that might be, we've reviewed approximately uh, 25, and I think we've had a negative uh, vote on maybe half a dozen. And four that went through a public process. Okay. Are we supposed to be today? Yeah, we're supposed to be. Um, um, Councilor Carney, but first, uh, if you indulge me a point of information, the um, there are two options here that the state gave us. One is the process by which we're struggling with right now. Mm -hmm. Another one was to put it on the ballot for the city to vote in toto <coughs> whether to accept or not accept an expansion of city streets. Can you? No, no, no. That's not. not okay. Question. No. Just a I'll, clarification. Just yeah. point, of, uh, point, point of clarification. Of well, actually, clear. Clear. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I just have. I I know that all my colleagues have already spoken on this, and I'm. Um, I'm just a little concerned uh, for a lot of the issues that were raised, um, especially about city infrastructure that may be underneath small streets, mm -hmm. even a 500. Um, possible uh, driveway, but um, you know, even even the issue of plowing, I'm wondering um, whether it's worth it. I mean, right now we plow all of these private ways and have been doing so for decades. And I know that this has been something that um, uh, has been incumbent upon us based on this recent Weymouth court decision. So we have to go out then and decide. There's also something here that kind of says, so here we have an opportunity to kind of get out of the obligation that we've had just by past practice of doing this for decades, of plowing certain streets and you know, being, feeling responsibility for the infrastructure. So I'm just not sure. I know that it was an issue. Many people who lived on private ways prior to this uh, court case were concerned that their streets, when they found out that they were private ways and knew that they had been through streets or whatever the condition were, had been pushing to get those streets accepted. And so now what I'm wondering is, what is really to be saved on the part of the city by not accepting every one of them? Because it seems to me, for example, even in the 500 foot, that's, that's one short swipe of a plow. 
And, and I'm not really sure whether, you know, it's worth the, um, more than aggravation, but, uh, and consternation, but really uh, concern, deep concern of residents who might live at those, of just having purchased homes in good faith and with a belief that they were city streets and having had that street, street um, plowed for, for decades. I'm wondering to what extent it's really worth it for us not to accept all of them um, and what's to be saved. Uh, I'll address that directly because uh, we've been with this for six years. The problem is that some of these, a, a minority, we're actually plowing somebody's driveway, wouldn't you say? I mean, there are a couple. Yes. We're plowing somebody's driveway. Yeah. So what would be saved? <clears throat> well, the fact is part of this came up when somebody I know who lives at one of the um, co-housing places where they have a private drive, they're saying, you're plowing this guy's driveway and we're paying for our own plowing of our driveway. That seems unfair to us. So we needed to look at that. Other people can come up and say, hey, that's probably where this whole court case came up. And so that's one issue. The other issue is there is cost to accepting these in the process. As we accept these streets, we have to do legal work and we have to do surveying work. That costs us some money. That was the issue you were going to talk about, so I want to address that in a moment. Of, we have two opportunities. One is to go through this process. The other possibility, which we're still discussing to see if it's viable, is to put it on the ballot of accepting these streets. But they would not be accepted as, pri as public streets. They would be accepted that we would pay for them. The citizens would say, we will allow payment of taxpayers' dollars for private ways. That would be what the ballot question would be for clarification. There are some good reasons to make them city streets. There are some other reasons financially that maybe you want to do a ballot question. But having looked at this, especially we've had a couple of instances on this committee where somebody, we've been plowing their driveway, long driveway, and they suddenly will tell somebody who's going to build there that that person can't have a right of way to do the building. I mean, here the city's taking care of that street and they've been they have the gall to then tell someone else is going to, they won't give them right away on a street the city was taking care of. And we've had a few instances like that. So there are some places where it just would not <coughs> make sense. There are a few of these that just doesn't make sense for us to continue doing the plowing. Or if I was somebody who lived where there were 20 houses and had a, a paved driveway up to it, I would say this is unfair. This is totally unfair that you're plowing this guy's quarter mile dirt road and you're not plowing my new paved road doesn't make sense. Council Freeman Daniels, Council Murphy, one over here. We'll see. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I agree um, in spirit with uh, what Councilor, with the esteemed Councilor from Ward 1 was saying and, and also uh, with um, the esteemed Councilor from Ward 2. Um, but I, I do want to again clarify that I believe that the ballot that a ballot question, which I, I believe is is should be on the November ballot election, the ballot question would not accept these private ways as a city street, and and that it's very I think that that would be it would be a mistake to do that on mass because I think <coughs> I, I agree with um, Councilor Specter that uh, there are city streets that um, are private ways or there are private ways that do not deserve to be public streets. Uh, I also believe that, that it would be very costly to do so. And I, I also am not sure that, uh, that I, I mean, we in, we in Northampton, we have a certain um, mentality about, the, about public uh, space and, and uh, public use. But, uh, you know, if we were in some sort of libertarian nightmare, that would be, it would be a horrible thing to, uh, f for someone's private way to be uh, given to the public. It would, be, uh, it would be a disaster. So, you know, different people who live on different private ways might feel that way. I mean, we have a diversity of opinion here in Northampton. Uh, what I think it, the issue is, is that um, if you, if the s voters in Northampton approve of a, of, a, of a ballot question, which would, it would simply authorize the city to use public funds to plow private ways regarding snow and ice. But some private ways might not get plowed. It would still, it, all the ballot question would do is allow all the private ways to be plowed but of those let's say 100 private ways the the, the department of public works in conjunction with the council and the mayor 
could say only these 40 or 80 will be plowed, these no, long driveways that. will not be. That's, that's, not gonna that's per but, but I, I just, excuse me. Please, please. It's perfectly legal. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think that this process here is the second horn of the process, which is saying, um, despite uh, a ballot question, these streets will, will not become public streets. And I see that as a possible way of saving money. Um, and, I, and, uh, and I also see it as, as, as appropriate in some cases. Councilor Murphy, then Councilor Tacey. Well, I'm assuming after this process takes its course, there'll be a, a lot fewer private ways because we're having an issue here over the ones that we may not want, but we're going to accept a bunch of them, I assume. So mm -hmm. the, 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 number majority of, of them. the number of private ways will be a lot fewer by the time we would get to that point anyway. So, it, you know, the number would, the cost of that would probably drop. Um, but one of the other problems is these private ways, the abutters don't own them either. You know, they don't own them. The city doesn't want them. They're of undetermined ownership in many cases. The residents have a right of way over these private ways, but they don't actually own the things either, correct? So mm -hmm. they'd be maintaining property of unknown ownership. <coughs> From what we've seen, often the property line is out in the middle of the road, mm -hmm. and they've mutually granted Agreed. one another okay. rights of way. Well, that, that does simplify it. Um, but to follow up on Councilor Freeman Daniels' point uh, of earlier, I think if, if we are going to be asked to discontinue them, we should have a specific plan of what we're discontinuing so there'll be no argument of, well, we thought it was here and you thought it was there. We should know what the infrastructure is in those private ways and what the city is committed to do from here on on each of these discontinued private ways on a case-by-case -case basis so there's no misunderstanding. You know, yes, this one has water sewer. Yes, we're going to discontinue it, but we're going to continue to be responsible for those lines up to the person's property line like we do under normal circumstances. Exactly. So that 10 years from now, no one's going to say, hey, you got to dig all the way out to the main road because we're not doing that. So we know, yes, we're discontinuing this one, but the city will not plow it, but they will maintain the infrastructure up to your property line if there's a problem with it. Then it would be a lot easier. There's a clear trail of what we'll do, what we won't do on a case-by-case -case basis. And that would make it a lot easier for us to deal with. Ned wants to respond to that. Sense. Just wanted to make a clarification to uh, Councilor Murphy. Under Massachusetts general law, if the street hasn't been accepted as a public way, even though the meets and bounds or boundary properties look like there's a way there, they still own up the center line of that, just so you're aware of that. Uh, Councilor Tayson and Councilor LaBarge. Yeah. When you were speaking, it was all stuff that we had, we had hit in the conference committee. That wasn't, it was no disrespect. It was, uh, it was just, we've been there. We've been through it all. And uh, the whole thing is, that it is, it's illegal to spend public funds on private property. And so maybe this process will keep us from a ballot question because a ballot question and nobody's going to be, can you spend everybody's tax dollars on private property in the midst of asking for an override <laughs> you know yeah. we've been we've been through it all i i, I and we, we've kicked this, this can down the road well, actually, actually it'll be after the override vote it'll be if this is on a ballot it'll be on the november yeah. ballot right yeah. but, but but we're discussing yeah. it now right. in the prior context. to in the context yeah yeah take a point so council labarge sorry um <laughs> say like with cardinal way I had residents who I worked with very closely. They signed their names on the petition directly themselves. And I was working with Georgia and Akitas very closely with that. And mostly all the developments in Ward 6, the residents signed the petitions. I'm very concerned about the way that people or in the office or employees are just signing these petitions. A little confused with that, Ned. My concern is when we had this petition on Cardinal Way, everybody wanted to make sure that it became a city street. I was told as a city councilor that once it's private with that development, they took the full responsibility 
of the road itself, the utilities that were in there, correct? Part of the way. That was always planned to be an accepted public way as far as I was concerned. No, that wasn't public. We had to make that a yeah, city street. You have to go through the process. Right. The developer forces it through, or six city residents, or any six people residing in Northampton. The problem we had with this is we do not get this process going what's going to come in November when there is no vote or a negative vote, all these people are left behind, yet we had the opportunity to do something for them. And that's why we're going down this road. We're trying to go through this process, this process in a fair manner and get this done because we don't know if the ballot question is going to be asked and we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Thank you. And we need six streets per month <clears throat> to come to us so we can work our way through the process. Our other concern is that if we waited until the residents submitted a petition, they might not do it till September, October, and then we'd have 40 streets and with winter fast approaching. So we're- It just scares me about the petition. <clears throat> and you know, it's a little- uh, Terry, can I ask, um, maybe the best way to proceed here, um, given there's a, there's a positive information for us to make what appears to be a rather critical and obviously, obviously potential, potentially political um, conflict. And I think it would, it would serve the council, it would help it to, if we had maps present with this, with an inventory of the infrastructure mm -hmm. that's present so that we're aware of what it is we're seeding, what it is we're not accepting, or and also some sense of feedback from the people who live, live on those properties. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, this is, this is extremely unusual. <clears throat> this is why we're having a very tortured conversation about it, is because we're, we, like you, really don't know exactly where our responsibility lies. There are serious consequences to decisions rendered, obviously, at least particularly for each person who lives on those streets. Um, and Regardless of whether this becomes a ballot question or not, I think uh, in, in, in deference to your commitment to do this in the most thoughtful, deliberative fashion, that it would help us enormously if we had deeper documentation for us to review so okay. that it's uh, going forward. So the ones that we do not approve, we will bring you more thorough documentation on. The ones that we do approve, my understanding from the city attorney, is that it's then <clears throat> our responsibility to have the street surveyed, have the legal work done, and bring it back to you with a complete package. So it's the ones we don't approve that we're f apparently falling that's, through that's the, the Well, that's the, I mean, we're, I think we're whacking through new weeds here. So, uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I, I concur with, with what you say. Um, I, I do have to say, though, um, I mean, I think a, a great start would be the minutes from the from the meetings in which these were these streets specifically okay. were we'll discussed. We'll put together a full. But I, I don't think it's the job of of your of the department or your board to represent what isn't anything that isn't already in the public record. I don't think it's your job to represent mm -hmm. feedback from residents. If they have feedback, they can come to this. They can come to this mm -hmm. uh, lectern on the sec the first and third Thursday. They showed up at your meetings and they spoke. And if they were, if they gave uh, literature it should be in the should be in the minutes i'd like to see the minutes but i sure. don't think it's your but your responsibility to represent their i, I would feedback. feel better if we knew that the the butters and then were notified mm -hmm. at the very least uh, well, and all the minutes are posted online and all the butters were notified by certified mail yeah uh Mark. um because this is on the floor now if i was going to move to continue this for the map and the <coughs> inventory mm -hmm. and so forth when would I move it to next meeting second meeting yeah. in June next meeting's fine. okay so I would move that we continue this issue to our first meeting in June second okay all right there's a motion to uh, postpone the decision to not recommend um, uh, till next meeting is, is there any discussion second that's been seconded yeah. uh, Councilor Tacey maybe yeah I'll go along with the uh, a postponement um, but I was perfectly willing to vote uh, in favor to accept your recommendation not to accept these two 
That was a triple. Yeah. Well, I was ready. I was ready to. Hold. I mean, I, I, I'm going to say it again because I don't believe that this is council stuff. It is. I know it is, but I think that's why. I, I, I think for council purposes, I mean, I think in so far as this affects members of the public uh, in a way that they didn't anticipate, and that we have the authority to to uh, deprive them of services they felt that they took for granted, that I think we should own it. I think the council bears some responsibility and that we should own it. We are the representative body and there has to be some point of access and accountability. And for better or for worse, it's on us, I think. Yeah. All right, well, how much of this is in this budget for you? And are we going to have to vote to approve funds for this? Well, it, very possibly, but that will be able to, we'll be able to discuss that in the budget hearings that we have scheduled. I have a feeling that Ned will be showing up for that. <laughs> um, there's the motion is to postpone. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Ned, you're still sitting around for, okay. Here we are, first item. Oh, we are crawling along. Very nice. Priscilla, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, recognize Priscilla Ross from the Northampton Family Fourth Committee is here to apply for fireworks display. Any, all those in favor of accepting, uh, recognizing Priscilla Ross for? Absolutely. All right. Aye. Aye. It's done. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Sean right. Porter. Hi, Sean. How Executive are you? Director. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the application is, well, actually, why don't you describe uh, the event, in fact, actually, we can we can get a double dip on this. You can actually promote the event. Yeah. And describe what we're doing. Um, so, good evening. Uh, this is the third annual Clinton Family Court celebration. It takes place at Look Park. It is a celebration of our city and the beginning of summer and the Fourth of July, our independence. Um, it was started by a volunteer committee. It continues to be run by a mostly volunteer committee. Um, which is getting larger, thank goodness. It is um, sponsored by local businesses and individuals, and already this year we sent out a letter two weeks ago, and we've increased our number of donors. We have uh, eight new donors already, so that's very exciting. Um, it was attended by approximately 7,000 people last year. Um, it starts out in the late afternoon with uh, a carnival that's sponsored by the PTOs, and this year it will be with, sponsored by the also the Northampton Athletic Boosters. <coughs> They're going to be providing a dunking booth and an obstacle course. Uh, there's live music for, th for three different bands, the Florence Community Band, and then it will culminate in fireworks. We have uh, four food vendors from our local area, um, which is new, um, that will be providing delicious food. And do you want to add anything, Sean? No, it's a great event. It's a lot of fun. It's very community-based, and we try to keep everybody very Northampton, Florence kind of based. That, so. It's family focused. It's um, alcohol free. Alcohol um, free. We'd no like food. it to be smoke free, but we're, we're working, working on, on that. that. <laughs> Fireworks have some smoke as well. Yeah, That's bit. right. <laughs> uh, any questions of the applicant? Uh, Council Um I also want to thank you again. It's a lot of work, and I have friends who do help out with volunteering that night. Save us all that. I am very pleased to read about because it won't occur at the park after the fireworks and then a firework was found at the park of how there is going to be safety retraining occurring from Atlas and the fire department working very closely in something to the effect that you're going to have people who will be searching the area after the fireworks and the following morning, correct? Yes required by law yep thank you this year the difference is that it will be supervised by the fire department this event would not be able to take place as safely and um and it wouldn't be as as great of an event if we didn't have the tremendous support of the city the fire department the police department rec department and, and look park thank you uh council murphy i would move we grant the application for fireworks to northampton family Fort. second Motion's made and seconded. Yeah. any other discussion any other questions I'm, I'm sorry that uh, you you had to endure our uh, budget discussion and uh, and uh, private public uh, discussion before we. Uh, I think. 
will unanimously approve this application. Uh, Councilor Schwartz. I just want to say I thank you for such a tremendous community contribution for your leadership and for bringing such a joyful event. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Um, yes, and, and, and I'll extend my apologies. I should have moved you up in the agenda, and it, I completely spaced it. So um, if you commit a crime, you will not be sentenced to any community service. <laughs> Beyond this point, you have now committed that service. We, we learned a lot tonight. Yeah. <laughs> education. Maybe more than you wanted to know, but I, I really appreciate your patience, and I will now call for a vote on this. All those in favor of granting the application for fireworks display for the Northampton Family Fourth Committee, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Um, oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> uh, we have before us a petition for street acceptance. Move referral just to refer Planning Board and BPW. It's just a referral. It's just a referral. It's okay. You shouldn't hurt a bit. Uh, the motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's a soy. That's a soy. That's a soy. Page two. Page two. Walking along here, I believe. Slowly. Um, um, yeah, that's right now. It's time to uh, advance and on the floor uh, the minutes to be approved. Move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Move these next three as a group. Second. Okay. The motion for uh, reports and committees and appointments. Uh, Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Now we're going to take a break. We're going to recess for Yay. finance committee. So don't turn off your cameras or go away from your TV sets. Yeah. Uh, I'm now seating the chair over to Council Murphy. So we're going to call the roll. Here. 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 So we have one item on the finance agenda. It's a very nice item. We are going to recommend to council the donation of what we do. Whereas Mr. Jack Horner and Mr. Ron Skinner Florence have made a donation of twenty thousand dollars to the city of Northampton, whereas the Northampton City Council gratefully acknowledges the donation as a gift to the city of Northampton. Now therefore it be ordered that in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, grants and gifts acceptance and expenditure, the Council approves the expenditure of gift funds for the painting of the Grove Street Inn, the city's homeless shelter located at 91 Grove Street. Second. 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 Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to applaud Jack and Ron for this is not the first time that they have ponied up, and I want to thank them very much. It paid it's, for a banner. That's <laughs> <laughs> <And> the banner. <laughs> That's missing. The Council of March. <laughs> yes, um, I want to thank Jack Horner and Ron Skin for their extraordinary gift of twenty thousand dollars to the Grove Street Inn. The Grove Street Inn is a twenty-two bed transitional and emergency shelter serving homeless individuals, which estimates the number of persons expected to benefit is two hundred. The Committee on Social Services and Veterans Affairs has been working tirelessly with Pat Keller, Director of Housing and Community Development Planner, and David Pomerantz, Director of Central Service, to upgrade the Grove Street Inn for six years now. The Grove Street Inn was in dire need of upgrading this shelter. It is a city building. I am so privileged to have such caring residents in Ward 6, Jack Horner and Ron Skin who look at our mission of the Grove Street Inn seriously and to continuously donate to make the inn a home and a safe place and a place to sleep and get the services that are needed to give them a good quality of life. This $20,000 will help to paint the outside of the home and this is the second time that Jack and Ron have donated to have the inn painted. Again, I wanna thank them for their continuous donations to the Grove Street Inn. Um, uh, and uh, just to note that Councilors Tacey and Labarge have been working closely with Peg Keller, uh, predating my time on the SSBA to, to try 
and upgrade the, uh, the, the circumstances and the infrastructure uh, there at the Grove Street Inn and some other places. And uh, to, to Jack and Ron, of course, th this, is, this is the perfect manifestation of committed citizenry. Um, taking, uh, spending money out of their pockets to subsidize people who are not capable of subsidizing themselves, or the city comes up short because of uh, reduced uh, federal grant monies and things of that nature, um, citizens stepped up in this game. And I, I it's, it's, we, I, I, I'm just expressing my gratitude as well. So Casey, yeah, and they went toe to toe with the Community Preservation uh, Commission, I guess, in Boston, trying to get them to point it to allow us to spend funds on that, but their reasoning was, even though it is affordable housing, without a doubt, their reason was it wasn't purchased with CPA funds, so they wouldn't allow us to expend CPA funds on it. So it was just, anyway, they're starting to loosen up the strings a little bit. We'll see what happens in the future. So any further discussion? Right, hearing none, all in favor of the Aye. recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Sure. And that's all that is on finance, so a motion to adjourn. I'm so hoped. Oh. Aye. Aye. Uh, we convene back in regular session. Is there interest in extending a recess, or is everyone okay? You want to recess? Yeah. We'll recess for seven minutes. Welcome back. We're coming out of recess. This is the North Hampton City Council meeting of uh, May 16, 2013. And we're back on track. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narco. It's ordered that um, Mr. Jack Corner and Mr. Ron Skin of Florence, Massachusetts, made a donation of twenty thousand dollars to the City of Northampton, and the Northampton, whereas the Northampton City Council gratefully acknowledges the donation as a gift to the City of Northampton. Now, therefore, be it ordered in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter Forty Four, Section Fifty Three A, grants gifts and acceptance and expenditure. The Council approves the expenditure of gift funds for the painting of the Grove Street Inn, the city's homeless shelter located at Grove Street. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this? I'd, I'd like to have two readings on this. I'd like to suspend Rule 14. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll do the first reading. Uh, do the first so they can get started. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, all those. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> this is a roll call. <coughs> right? Uh, <laughs> It's a financial order. Yeah. It's required for ordinances, but not for necessarily. Why don't we? Why don't we just prime the pump and do a roll call? Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniel. Aye. Councilor Yes. 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 Very appreciative. Yes. Point of just point of information. I believe that appropriations. By a roll call, but uh, this seems to me to be an acceptable. Well, then we can the next vote. If there is one. We'll we'll suspend suspend, suspend rule 14. Second. Second. All those in favor of suspending rule 14. Aye. 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 Second reading. Move second reading. Second. Request roll call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to break your leg. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 The, was this a serious request for uh, No. <laughs> no. Counselor the the White lame duck maverick anger has management. drawn his <laughs> lame duck. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Okay. Do we take the second reading? That was it? Sure. No, we yeah. suspended the rules, but we didn't. No, that was just Oh, we took a second reading. Okay. Yeah, we did. Sorry, I missed it. You, you were still arguing with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was discussing it with myself. <laughs> okay. This is uh, this is upon the recommendation of the Office of Planning and Sustainability and Councilor Eugene Casey. Um, and this is uh, actually. Do you want me to read this? This is the second reading for the no, bike. No, we don't. The road road reading. Extension. I'll accept a motion. Put it on the floor. So, so second. Any discussion on this? Um, uh, Council Tacey, do you want to speak to the fact that, uh, about the, where the funds come from? It's, there seemed to be some well, confusion in the public comments. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, um, we couldn't do it with transportation funds because it didn't go anywhere. It ended out in the woods. There was uh, no destination. So there was a new clean, it was a water act 
uh, grant that came from the federal government to the state and from the state to us. It's actually federal money distributed to us by the state. And um, it does not come out of the city coffers in any way, shape, or form, but it is still grant money. And it's, it's not money that could be applied to any other purpose in the no. city uh, for Nothing. to offset the deficit. Councilor Freeman Daines. I appreciate that clarification. I also, uh, I don't believe that anyone would recommend that in tough times uh, the city cuts back on its attempt to uh, leverage um, labor to get grants or to get outside funding for any improvement, public improvement. Uh, I think tough times require budget scrutiny over the things that we collect all over our revenues and expenditures, but uh, I'm not sure that I've met a citizen yet that uh, doesn't believe in um, getting grants from larger governments for uh, public improvements. And if I may, too, <clears throat> I actually am really in support of this because it is transportation. It is, it is, maybe it might not get us into Williamsburg at this point, but somewhere in the future. Um, I know I use the bike path a lot, always did kids to school, stuff such as that. Uh, and if you look at the sidewalks in Northampton, a lot of the sidewalks are empty, but the rail trail is always hopping. It's always busy. So people are more comfortable on these rail trails and it's, a sh it's the shortest distance between two points. It's a straight shot, it's level. Um, so I I'm supporting it. Uh, let's see if the rest of the council is. Um, this will require a roll call vote. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Um, this is the proposed easement. I'm sorry, yeah, this is the acquired easement by a gift of historic Northampton. This would be the first reading. Um, this is upon the recommendation of the Department of Public Works ordered that whereas the Bridge Street School is a drainage problem that can best be served by installing a stormwater sewer to Graves Avenue and whereas historic Northampton Incorporated has agreed to provide an easement over its property from Graves Avenue to the property on which the Bridge Street School is located and whereas said easement does not provide the public with any rights of access and whereas no appropriation is required for this acquisition, now therefore be it ordered that the city of Northampton acting through its mayor is authorized to acquire such easement by gift of historic Northampton Incorporated. Is there a motion? So, so moved. Right. Right. Moved seconded. seconded. Uh, discussion, please. And Councilor Freeman Daniels, I'll defer to you in first and then uh, Councilor LaBarge and then Councilor Adams. Thank you, Mr. President. I, um, I, uh, I am going to, um, try to remind the council of the discussion we had regarding Graves Avenue a few months ago. Um, and, uh, and interestingly, it's really the same strip of land, actually, as this is a larger swath than uh, was originally proposed by the planning department. Uh, so there is, it, there is um, obviously some concern for the Graves Avenue residents regarding this uh, regarding this easement. And um, I think it can, um, I think it can be, it's very difficult to summarize, but I think part of it is uh, the concern regarding uh, how many trees will be needed to be uh, destroyed uh, or uh, in order to um, install the uh, water line, the uh, drainage line, uh, and also what the easement does um, provide um, whereas I know we have it in our in our preamble that it doesn't provide the public with any rights of access but I would really like to see that in the easement language um, and this this is a really a call from uh, I've gotten f phone calls and emails from uh, residents on Graves Avenue who are concerned about this so um, I'm hoping that uh, the council will um, will uh, will agree with me that uh, by the second reading that we would really like to see some greater specificity around the plan and uh, and the actual language for the easement. 
Um, by the way, uh, Ed Huntley is still recognized. He can address any questions that people have. Council LaBarge, you were next. Councilor uh, Adams and then Councilor Spector. Um, I have some concerns hearing a resident um, from Grave Street at the public session tonight in regards of not knowing about this coming to City Council and about the lack of communication. And his request was to table it. And I would like to see this tabled to give them the opportunity to be able to know exactly what is involved with this easement. And like a counselor from Ward 3 had great concerns of hearing from residents about how many trees that might be removed from that site. Um, I really think it should be tabled. Uh, Councilor Adams, then Councilor Tacey. I echo the, the, the concern of, of the learned counselor from Ward 3. Um, I'm, I'm very skeptical about this, actually. It seems eerily similar to something we voted down recently, as we all know. And I'm also concerned about the process. And Mr. Huntley, can I ask you a couple questions? Sure, Ken. Could, could, you, could you describe in great detail the drainage issue, please? Sure. Um, Bridge Street School in their parking lot and playground area, I would call it, have a number of leaching basins that don't rely on connections to a stormwater system. They use the, uh, the pervious soil around them to leach groundwater, or actually uh, stormwater, out into the native soils. They failed over the years, so there's huge puddles and they don't drain anymore. So we were approached by Central Services, Dave Pomerantz, to connect it to a local drain system. The closest place we could find that work with elevations was Grave Avenue. So we've been working with Historic Northampton, retaining this drainage easement for the past year or so, and that's what it's for. It is a drainage easement to lay a drain pipe and to be able to maintain it going in the future. And, 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 how the, and the two, what happened with Mr. Fiden here and the, what DPW's here for tonight are two completely different things. And how long has this problem been going on for? Um, we were made aware about a year and a half ago to two years ago. And, and we did the plans in-house, engineering designs and plans, and we put it out to bid. And why did Office of Planning and Sustainability make you sponsor this? I'm kidding. That's a joke. That's, they did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councilor Tacey, uh, then Councilor Spector. The, um, it, it says, whereas the Bridge Street School has a drainage problem that can be served by installing stormwater sewer to Graves Avenue. It, it's not just outside. That water backs right up into the school. It goes right down the stairs, it goes in, it fills up in the basement. Yep. Um, and I have witnessed it several times in constant pumping. Every time it rains hard, that water pours into the Bridge Street School. Uh, in the easement, it said, it, it, Mr. Greg Jones, what is his name? Greg Jones from Graves Avenue, said that it was too open ended and there were no restrictions. Is, but there is a restriction if it's for stormwater, it's for stormwater. I know it's for a drain system to be maintained by the Department of Public Works. I know that Linda Manor has an easement across property for water, and they wanted to add more water or and sewer, and they couldn't because the easement was specific to water or sewer, mm -hmm. not both, it was one or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm, I'm just kind of curious as to what. Uh, he might be talking about for restrictions on this. Um. I don't know what he's talking about. Like I said, we're not what part of anything that the Office of Planning and Development had and Sustainability had planned a few months ago. Uh, this has been in the works on the DPW for about a year, and we've worked hard with Historic Northampton to grant us an easement free of charge to lay a drain line and not provide public access. And how much of a burden would this be for you if it were postponed until the next meeting or something? Uh, Actually, we are in the process now of creating property plan or plans for what's happened. The, the last part of Graves Avenue is a, is a private way still. There's a portion of 80 feet of the last section. So we actually have survey plans being created right now to bring that to city council for their approval. Um, we have a bid accepted from, or actually we received bids from various companies to do the work. The money's been set aside through central services with the school department budget to do this work. And this is part of the last leg of it. This is a drainage easement. Council Spector, then Council Murphy. Yep. <clears throat> this is to uh, Councilor Daniels. You've been involved in this. Was I interpreting your first statement correctly that what you were suggesting we do, because you've been, that we vote on this tonight, that not postpone, you weren't asking for postponement. 
um, or tabling it. You were saying vote on it tonight, but then between now and the next meeting, there may be other second vote that you'd like some other things. Is that, is that correct? Because I, I, I would defer to you and take some guidance from you in terms of that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, uh, cl clearly the um, the residents of Graves Avenue do not have the same sense of urgency that uh, that the school and the uh, central services and the Department of Public Works might have. Uh, so I think they would prefer it to be postponed until they could have some of their personal concerns assuaged by um, a representative maybe from the DPW. But I, I, and I'm, I'm hopeful that in the two weeks that transpire between this meeting and, and the next, which will be this, uh, another vote on this, that we can possibly um, get that get that to happen, mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm, um, I, I think that uh, provided that we can uh, we actually can see the easement language, and that it gets clearer as far as the plan goes, I think that uh, I'm willing to uh, to take the first vote tonight. Okay. But but I uh, with the with the understanding Understand. that we will Understand. we will continue this process and if. The second vote could be a completely different story. Yeah, uh, and Swift, just follow up, <coughs> follow up on the question. Yeah, so one of the things that could happen if this, if between the first and second vote, there's not, you will inform us whether there's been satisfied. We could always postpone or table the second vote. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So this is an easement to bury a pipe. Correct. That is correct. So no pedestrian access, no vehicular access. To be. For access for DPW for, for you to bury that's the correct. pipe and maintain the pipe. Maintain it. That's correct. not not for the general public to no. walk on the easement, to drive bicycles on the easement. If they want to use it, they got to crawl, crawl through the pipe. <laughs> they couldn't fit. They wouldn't fit it. It's in only the twelve pipe. inches. Okay, so it, uh, it's not <laughs> granting anyone a walkway because that's kind of what planning was talking about was a walkway. This is bury a pipe. It's this different. is this is why the language in front of you tonight is very clear about that because we want to make sure that. This wasn't associated with part of our project. So let me get this right. We're putting infrastructure under a private way <laughs> that we're guaranteeing oh, easement. Yeah, uh, yeah just, just, mm -hmm. just for fun. How big is the pipe? 12 inch. 12 inch. Concrete. Pardon me? Concrete or is it HD? Um, it's either concrete or HDPE ADS pipe. Okay. Let's check it. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, thank you, Ned. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Good evening. This is the first vote on this. Um, and uh, roll call, please, Mary. Uh, yes. Aye. Yes. 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 All right. Despite the appearances on the agenda, we're actually more than halfway through. Picking up speed. Picking up speed. Stretch. Uh, this is a uh, call for a special election. The uh, warrant for a special municipal election be held Tuesday, June 25th, 2013. Uh, this is a request for two readings, by the way. Um, actually, um, I. I I'm actually going to read this just for purposes of explaining to people where the voting places are. Um, for those of you who know at home, just be smug. Uh, ordered that the special municipal election will be held on Tuesday, the 25th of June, 2013, in the following polling places designated by the council as follows. Ward 1, Precinct A in Jackson Street School Auditorium. Ward 1, Precinct B in Jackson Street School Auditorium. And Ward 2A and Ward 2B will be uh, voting in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School, Ward 3A and Ward 3B in the Senior Center at the Great Room uh, on 67 Con Street, <coughs> Ward 4A and Ward 4B also in the Senior Center Great Room 67 Con Street, Ward 5, Precinct A in Florence Civic and uh, Business Building at 90 Park Street, and Ward 5, Precinct B in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School, Ward 6, A and B in Robert K. Finn Ryan Road School, uh, Ward 7, Precinct A in John F. Kennedy Middle School in the Community Room, 
and Ward 7, Precinct B in Leeds School Gymnasium, lower level. And the polls will be open at 7 o'clock in the forenoon and close at 8 o'clock in the evening of the said day. And all such voters in several wards, in the several wards and the precincts in which they are individually entitled to vote between the said hours, given their votes yes or no on the following question. Shall the city of Northampton be allowed to assess an additional two point or two and a half million dollars in real estate and personal property taxes for the purpose of funding the operating budgets of the city and public schools for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2013? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Is that world? Uh, Councilor Tacey. My yes vote on this is a vote only to approve the location. Understood. Um, roll. Uh, there is a roll call. Um, yes, roll call, please. Council Freeman Daniels? Aye. Council Labarge? Yes. Council Murphy? Yes. Council Schwartz? Yes. Council Spector? Yes. Council Casey? Yes. Council Adams? Yes. Council Carney? Yes. Council Point? Yes. Now there's a request. Just suspend Rule 14. Second. There's a motion to and second it is to suspend Rule 14. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Move second reading. Second. Right. Second reading is moved. Councilor Freeman Daniels. I wanted to say this at first reading, but uh, looks like I get another chance. There you go. Uh, That's why we have two. <laughs> this election is for all voters. This is not for property owners, not for business property owners, not for just homeowners. This is for any voter in Northampton. Everyone who lives in Northampton uh, contributes to our tax base, whether they do it by renting, by owning property, by personal property, real estate, or they do it by uh, frequenting the businesses or other buildings which pay taxes. Uh, they're all part of the economy, and they all have equal say in our public policy. Public policy is set by the public. Those are the rules of the game. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. No one believes that only corporations can vote on the corporate tax rate. That's a matter of, for the public, for everyone to decide, all voters. And so I hope that the voters come out for this question and that we can do away with the medieval notion that only property owners should be allowed to vote. I very much appreciate your remarks on that as well. Any other comments before we proceed? Uh, medieval. Yes. Yes. Council Schwartz? Yes. Council Carney? Yes. Council Point? Yes. 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 Aye. This is um, on the recommendation of Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels. This is the installation of temporary stop signs at Jackson Street and Woodlawn Avenues and Prospect Street. And this is the first reading. Uh, accept a motion. For so move. Okay. Councilor Freeman Daniels, you want to speak to it? Yeah, thank you. Um, we can, I, you might want to read the motion, actually. Yeah, I, I'll do that. I'm sorry. Yes. It's uh, ordered that. Uh, um, Temporary rule, temporary stop signs at Jackson Street, Woodlawn Avenue, Prospect Street, be ordered. Whereas 312-16 uh, of Northampton's ordinances stipulate that the City Council may take, may make temporary rules regarding traffic or tests using signs, markings, and other devices. And whereas there have been a high frequency of accidents at and near this intersection, whereas the Transportation and Parking Commission has discussed the value of a temporary trial of a four-way stop at this intersection. And whereas the manual on uniform traffic control devices allows for the use of four-way stop signs as an interim measure when it warrants for signalization intersections uh, for, for signalization intersection of met now therefore be it ordered that the Department of Public Works in accordance with its normal procedures practices and work order may install temporary stop signs and any other necessary markings and other devices at or near this intersection to fully test the efficacy of stop signs at Jackson Street, Woodlawn Ave, Prospect Street, 
Uh, the DPW will report to the Transportation Parking Commission upon installation, and the test shall no, last no longer than 120 days. So, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I, um, I'm asking the Council's indulgence on this one because uh, it, it's not ordinary that we, that, or hasn't been for a long time, that we are in the habit of voting on stop signs. Uh, much less temporary stop signs. So uh, I think, um, and, and Councillor Tacey can, uh, can uh, back me up on this. We were, I think at the Transportation Parking Commission, we were pretty much ready for the DPW to install stop signs uh, because it, it meets the warrants. The intersection has been, has been studied and it meets warrants for signal, it meets warrants for stop signs. It actually, uh, the state has an interest in and I'm, I, I know I'm gonna, we're going to get the, 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 it, the, the interest is in a mini roundabout. So, um, so uh, we were ready for it just to happen, but um, Chief Sinkowitz reminded us that uh, this ordinance was on the books, that tra the temporary traffic measures um, needed to be approved by council. So uh, we're, uh, I'm, I'm actually, uh, given that we might benefit from installation during school, I'd like to, uh, Pass this quickly, uh, and um, and hopefully the DPW will be able to um, to do, do its engineering before school ends, and it, we can see if it if it actually works because we're only allowed 180 days under the ordinance. And you're asking for two weeks. Yes, sir. yes, Mr. President. We had huge discussion on this. Come up Barrett Street and take a left on Jackson, and you take your life in your hands trying to get out across Prospect Street. It's really Matter of fact, I always take a right and I head out to the light on Bridge Road. It's quicker to get to Florence that way. Um, and a four-way stop to it always gives you another defensive option. So. Uh, Councilor Adams and then Councilor Is the maximum 120 days? 120 by ordinance. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I'm happy to see this, uh, this temporary measure go in, but I'll also remind folks that it was uh, a topic of discussion at the Transportation and Parking Commission some time ago to explore the mini roundabout, uh, at least with um, temporary uh, bumpers and things that could make that work. I'm, I'm a little um, disappointed that that hasn't, that actually didn't go forward. And so maybe I'd ask the councilor to speak to that. It, it is, uh, it's being pursued. Uh, okay. it, it is, um, there, this is the first step in the, in the uh, engineering process just to see what a four-way stop does. But it seems as though the state might be uh, uh, interested in, in installing or funding part, part, part of it. So I think it won't be, uh, it, given that the DPW is, um, is interested in it as well, I think that might be going forward, but it, not, probably not this season. Thank you. But it's coming. Just clarification, it, it may not happen. Uh, just so everyone, <laughs> <laughs> the roundabout, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to uh, um, make everyone think that the roundabout's going to happen, a roundabout's going to happen there, but it, but we will be having those conversations at the, at the transportation. So, you know, some people don't need to sharpen their pitchforks just yet. It may be premature. Or late but this issue. Yeah, it's not on this issue. Um, the roll call for this, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Accept a motion to suspend rules. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I'll accept a motion for the second reading. Move second reading. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Mary, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Yes. The second reading to uh, rezone the watershed protection throughout the city. Uh, I'll accept a motion, put it on the floor. Second. Any further discussion on this? No? Okay. Sorry, I just assumed. Mary? No problem. Yes. 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 Yes.
Oh, there's six. This is passed uh, May 2nd, 2013. This is the corrected second reading vote needed to description. What's that name? Yeah, would you please? And the, and uh, it, 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 uh, it's a. Wait a Okay. It's written incorrectly by um, the planning department as far as the footage, and this is the correct footage, so they can't go ahead and finish this work unless we uh, amend the footage. Amend. So it's it's not actually gone to ecode yet. We were able to stop it before it was uh, entered, so it hasn't cost the city any money to correct this. So this this document reflects the amended language? It's the, the part that's crossed out for right. um, the Fair Street extension. The, the okay. highlighted part is the correct. Okay, so the, the, the part that you actually see in gray at the bottom is the corrected DPW language. So I'll the, move the corrected yeah. second reading. Second. Okay, any discussion on this? All right, roll call please, as amended. Councilor Casey? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Stubbs? Yes. Uh, next up is uh, parking prohibition at all times on Hockman Road. No, we, did. We, we just did That's that. What we just did. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is uh, this is Councilor Specter's uh, hard work here. Uh, this is upon the recommendation the of the Committee on so. Appointments and Evaluations Ordinance and Ordinance of the City of Northampton, providing that the Code of Ordinance of the City of Northampton be amended by adding Section 5-5, providing that elected officials and compensation be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton the City Council assembled as follows, that Section 5-5 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be added so that such section shall be as follows. Uh, add Section 55 compensation, elected officials' annual compensation shall be as follows. The mayor, $80,000. The city clerk, $65,000. City council president, $5,500. City council, $5,000. School committee, $2,500. Superintendents of Smith's Agricultural School, $2,500. Elector under the Oliver Smith will, ten bucks. <laughs> uh, trustee under the will of Charles E. Forbes, zero. And the community pre preservation at large, also zero. And the mayor, city clerk, city council, school committee, superintendents of Smith's Agricultural School shall be eligible to enroll in the municipal health insurance and retirement plans. And the uh, elected officials' compensation advisory board members' term compensation. The elected officials' compensation advisory board shall periodically, but not less frequently than 10 years, study the adequacy and equity of the compensation, benefits, and expenses, allowances of municipal elected officials, and report its findings and recommendations to the mayor and the city council, and said reports shall be filled with the city, filed with the city of the clerk. Uh, the board shall be composed of seven members, each appointed by the mayor, subject to confirmation by the city council, and the shall serve a term of two years. Members of the board shall serve without compensation. Former and current elected officials and relatives of elected officials shall not be eligible to serve on this committee, and the committee will submit recommendations to the city council, which will have the authorization to act or not act. Second. Uh, any discussion? Councilor Spector. Well, let me just um, say that the it's Section C, the up until Section C, everything is boilerplate that we needed to be in there including just so folks at home understand we are not making recommendations on compensation this evening like the mayor's salary that was required that that be in the ordinance when we submit it so everything up to c is boilerplate that has to be in there even um c number uh, num number one <laughs> is also boilerplate language it's two three and four and five there which came out of our committee and the discussion in our committee which are the recommendations for how to set up the committee so that those are really the the place where the discussion is um, and this was required by the new charter should be pointed out. it was required by the new charter um, we may want to have two readings this evening because we are late yes. with this the requirement of the charter 
Yeah, that's 120 days, and I don't even think we would just going to miss it. We have to keep Councilor Specter out of charter jail. Uh, yeah. Councilor Adams first. <laughs> sure. Councilor Freeman, I'll Specter. bail him out. <laughs> Section C, Part 4. Yeah. When it, when it states that relatives of elected officials shall not be eligible to serve, does that mean just current elected officials? Relatives of just current? Seems like yes. Uh, I, I were, even though we're late, I am uncomfortable with two readings tonight, uh, okay. so I'll vote against two. But uh, I also think that there's a s under benefits and expenses. We might want to reconsider the uh, last part of the line: enroll in municipal health insurance and retirement plans. Um, there's the mayor. I believe the mayor and uh, city clerk are eligible for a one type of retirement plan, and the the rest of us are eligible for a different one uh, that might be germane to the to the section um, so it might be that that might need amending um, so uh, maybe it might be worth waiting, waiting for two what I would do is I will let me check with um, I think it was Lynn who who wrote this and had the boilerplate so I'll find out if that language can be changed in terms of it may be required language in there or boilerplate language but and, and I'm fine with doing a second reading as long as the council president keeps me out of I'll do my best jail. I'll do my best uh, you'll be punished by community service having to serve the next meeting that you plan on skipping out on that see <laughs> yes. as far as relatives of elected officials goes are we going to take the language of the ethics that is immediate family or is it relatives point. like that's second a, or third cousins you know, that that's a good point I think in Northampton we'd have to go with the if we'd start getting to second and third cousins we may not have many people to serve on the board yeah. <laughs> so I will clarify I will look at the um, we can look at what the ethics uh, the state ethics committee says on that and uh, they are they're pretty specific. Okay. Actually, you could just add language um, as per ethics. Massachusetts yeah. ethics guidelines. Or whatever. If you would like to make that as a friendly amendment, we could add that. So be it. Right, so I will second it. All right, so that's that's a that's a amendment. We actually, there's anyone interested in discussing that amendment? Okay. I will vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Back to the body. Uh, uh, my sense is that everyone's comfortable with the first reading, would prefer some deeper scrutiny for the second reading. There is no call now for two readings tonight? No. Okay. Um, there is no loss of liberty for Councilor Specter if... I, as I said, I will do my best. <laughs> within, within all the powers that I enjoy, I will protect him. Um, this is a roll call for the first reading, please. Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. 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 Nay. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. 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 No. Okay. So it's past first reading, and this will come up again at the next council meeting with uh, some modified language. Perhaps. 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 <laughs> The last three are being referred. Mr. President, I, ref I move that we refer seven, eight, and nine to the Transportation Parking Commission and the Committee on Ordinance, Orders, and Rules. A motion to move them as a group. Seven, eight, and nine. Is there a second? second. Yes. There's a second. Okay. And we're adding, I just want to make sure we, we're adding the referral to park, to transportation parking. It was, as I understood, that was. That was what was Councilor Freeman Daniels Great. moved to make two committees referred to two committees. Uh, any discussion on that? All those in favor of referring? Aye. 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 All right, now we're up to number 10. This is a limited time parking on Round Hill Road. This is to refer to the same referral. We referred all three. Where's number 10? <laughs> number nine. Third <laughs> number. You have a ten? Just make one up. <laughs> Where is ten? I don't, don't worry. I, it's my own special ten. Don't worry. Got it. Got it. All right. Um, 
isn't there a song? Don't worry. That's the uh, uh, so that is the table all- number ten till next week. <laughs> yes. Second. Don't Here, worry. It is. It was okay. <laughs> um, we've done the updates um, from which was essentially announcing the public hearings for the budget, and I encourage everyone to attend. There has been a request by uh, the trustees of Smith's vocational to be included in our budgetary discussions. So we'll add them. I think we're going to try and get them in, shoehorn them in on the 30th. So, um, um, so uh, is there any information requests as per the charter? Any new business? Just a- did, yes. did you announce cancellation of finance on the 28th? I'm sorry, yes. The because we're going to be doing budget hearings the next two nights. That's right. We're going to, the Finance Committee will not be convening on the 28th because it will be superseded by the budget hearings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, the Smith School thing again one more time. They're they, they've requested to be included in the budget hearings for the purposes of discussion and analysis of the budget and uh, requested the 30th. And we're going to see if we can fit them in. They want to make, they want to be part of the budget pre- presentations. They want to be one of the departments coming to represent. No. They want to be on the 30th. On the 30th. On the 30th. Yes. Um, Counselor at large, well, we're going to have a schedule made out on who's coming in. It's, it's, it, Mary's already actually got a draft schedule and that you'll have it. Yep. Okay. It's posted. Okay. So it will be amended to reflect the inclusion of the Smith Vocational School. Another question I had, please. I know as long as I've been a counselor, we've always been asked what days we would be available to look at our schedules and so forth. And I was surprised to see that these dates were just designated and I, no I, schedule or anything from us. Right. And I'm sorry, that's actually on me. And part of the reason is because we have some rather tight scheduling issues at this point. And I, I made an executive decision, which maybe perhaps I'm not entitled to, but I made an executive decision. This is why. This is one of the main reasons we run a conservative office is to, to oversee this budget. And that I understand that there are other extenuating circumstances and conflicts for counselors, but I think we should make every effort possible to try and make these hearings and to make them easier and more accessible for the public, not so much necessarily pertaining to our schedule, because this is our job. This is why we get paid that Um, (laughs) $5,000. Five cents an hour. (laughs) Yeah, 5,500 in my case. Just that 500 bucks entitled me to this executive decision. So um, I'll take the heat for that. But I really do think it's kind of important. I, th- I think it's very important. I think this is this is the the essence of our our charge. Um, Thank you. Hmm? Yes. I mentioned it to Jesse. One other thing, Council of Ours, is that uh, by the new charter, we're required to place a legal ad to post the public hearing, which is June 6th. So that has already been sent to the Gazette, and the charter requires that now. It's a it's a new for thing. Our, our budget hearings. For the mm-hmm. budget he, the budget hearing that's going to be on June 6 about the the full budget. So, President Dwight scheduled the May 29 and 30, and also the June 6 budget hearing has to be legally posted in the Gazette. It will be in in the next few days. And so that that also figured into the timeline discussion as well. So, and I I, I appreciate your understanding in that. Um. There's no new business, I don't think, so I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Um, All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 A